Hello and welcome inside the broadcast booth at Cody High School. The Warriors and Lady Warriors face off against the Bronx and Phillies in the first conference game of the 2024 campaign. And we have all the action here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show presented by McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate in Worland. This and every broadcast would not be possible without the wonderful support of this community and the following businesses. Pinnacle Bank, McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, Hasco Industrial Supply, Admiral Beverage, King's Carpet One, Sally's Classic Pizza, Swing Trucking, McGarvin and Moberly Construction, Diesel Pickup Specialist, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, Bryant Honey, Jay's Detail, Sage Creek Land and Cattle, and Stellar Roofing and Construction. If you're looking for an exciting advertising opportunity, look no further than McKamey Broadcasting. We're running a March special for any business or organization that signs on and pays in full to the soccer season. You'll get $50 off of your advertising package here in the final uh, season of the 2024 sports calendar here during Warrior and Lady Warrior Soccer. You can contact me, Jordan McKamey, at McKameyBroadcasting at gmail.com or by call or text at 307 307- 431-1468. Varsity soccer action is just around the corner from Cody High School. Will the Warriors claim a road victory at the home of the defending 3A girls state champs, or will Cody protect their house and corral the Warriors? Find out next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. In its 24 years in Warland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Warland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! 
And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Jordan McKamey alongside you for play-by-play -play action of Worland Lady Warrior and Worland Warrior Varsity Soccer here in the 2024 campaign. Looking at this one, it's a much-anticipated matchup here on the 3A girls side of things as this is a rematch of last year's state championship game. Uh, these two teams were Warland Lady Warriors coming as the two team in 3A soccer. The Phillies, the two time defending champs are the top of the 3A division. Uh, a couple of different starts yesterday for these two squads. The Cody Phillies went on the road to Pinedale and put it on the Lady Wranglers 15 to nothing. Again, sounds like a low scoring football game instead of uh, a soccer match, but that was a score yesterday, and the Lady Warriors uh, fell at home uh, to the uh, Sheridan Lady Bronx, a 4A versus 3A matchup. The Lady Warriors falling 4 0 there. Very competitive for the opening. I'd say 60 minutes of it. The Lady Bronx had the better of it in the uh, final 20, where they added uh, three goals in the second half. But the Lady Warriors were definitely hanging around, had some players. Uh, Making some good runs out there. The the defense, as we'll talk with head coach Jesus Tavila a little bit later on here on the uh, McGarvin and Taylor pregame show, want some of those defensive holes to be plugged up here against the uh, Phillies of Cody High School. They will put a lot of pressure on this Lady Warrior back line. Again, hey, Jesus uh, Tavila, the coach for the Lady Warriors, has mentioned uh, Rivers Carroll is currently out uh, for the uh, first part of the season, expecting it to be a couple of weeks is what the uh, coach was saying. So dealing with a, a couple of things there is Rivers Kale, one of the best players in 3A. So the Lady Warriors having to turn to some other players out there, especially on the attacking side of things, uh, looking for some goals. Uh, Naeli Aguayo, Yahida Aguayo, and uh, the uh, freshman Ali Stamatakos played really well yesterday, made some great runs, won some of those 50-50 balls. That's where the Lady Warriors are going to try to improve today is in that 50-50 area of this game. Lady Warriors and the Cody Phillies just about 25 minutes from uh, the opening kick, 21 minutes away from our national anthem and then our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening kickoff. I will tell you today, it is the early parts of the season. The uh, Phillies and Bronx didn't really have their uh, lineups, rosters in order really till probably 24 hours before uh, this game or 24 hours before their game against Pinedale. So we will do our best for uh, any folks from the uh, Cody area that ended up tuning in here to the McKamey Broadcasting Network. We'll do our best to uh, get those names squared away throughout uh, this contest. But again, we'll mostly focus on the uh, Lady Warrior players getting those names right out there, although we'll do our best again to try to uh, – get those Philly names throughout, uh, Philly and Bronx names throughout the early parts of the contest. But truly, the Bronx uh, roster isn't even fully uh, fully uh, generated just yet. So presents a unique challenge for us here in the broadcasting booth. But the ones that we do have fully generated are from the head coaches for the Warriors and Lady Warriors, uh, Jesus Damila and Ron Overcast. So we will uh, get going here in this one between your Lady Warriors and the Cody Phillies. Again, just about 20 or so minutes away from now, we're going to take another break uh, on the McGarvin and Taylor show. On the other side, we'll continue to prep you for this one here in a 1-2 matchup in the rematch of the 2023 state title game. Uh, the Cody Phillies and your Whirling Lady Warriors. This is Whirling Lady Warriors Soccer on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show and the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Sally's Classic Pizza in Whirlin, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453.
Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email McKamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. And welcome back inside the broadcast booth here at Cody High School, home of the Bronx and the Phillies 3A girls varsity soccer. Just about, well, 15, 15 to 20 minutes away from kicking off here from Cody High School. Again, this uh, girls contest is a matchup between the defending champions, the Cody Phillies, and the state runner-up, your Worland Lady Warriors. An anticipated rematch, some new players out there. For the Lady Warriors, again, there was a lot of learning yesterday in a 4 nothing loss to the uh, Sheridan Bronx. Uh, that back line got under pressure a few times. few mistakes in the back, which you expect. The uh, also Warrior Stadium field, which is natural grass, not, uh, not quite up to the uh, standard it will be later on in the season as we're just early on in spring. Here it's the artificial turf, so expect the ball to move a lot better, not seeing those awkward bounces out there for these two teams. So that could help with that short... Uh, that short triangle passing in some uh, tight areas for the uh, Lady Warriors and the Cody Phillies. So expect to see that a little bit. As mentioned, Lady Warriors falling 4 0 to the Sheridan Lady Bronx. Phillies out on the road, put 15 goals past the Pinedale Lady Wranglers. So uh, they start their season uh, well on the front foot. And as mentioned, the uh, roster just constructed really yesterday on the before that kickoff against the uh, Pinedale Lady Wranglers. So head coach. Uh, Marion Myers unable to uh, get us a full roster. We do have a printout, though, just received here before the game, so we'll do our best to uh, get those names right. But, of course, our main focus is for the Worland Lady Warriors here today. So that is where our focus uh, will be. Might just try to update you if there's any goals to try to get some of those uh, Philly names out there. But for the Lady Warriors, they're going to look to find their offensive legs today. Uh, again, we're going to look at some uh, players through the midfield. Uh, Nyeli Aguayo going to be one of them. Uh, Kiara Wolfenden, another uh, player up in the attacking 
area for the Lady Warriors and uh, Ali Stamatakos, the uh, freshman, also there. Uh, yesterday, Stamatakos came off the uh, off the bench. It was uh, Yahida Aguayo uh, that ended up getting the uh, start for the Lady Warriors yesterday. We'll see uh, what head coach Jesus Damila starts with today. We have the expected starting lineup, which we'll get to a little later on. Of course, those starting lineups presented to you by the Northern Wyoming News. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. We're going to take another break on the uh, – McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here as we'll uh, talk with the head coach in charge, head coach Jesus down that conversation. Pitch side comes your way next here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. In its 24 years in Warland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, room by room, Designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor. King's Carpet One supports many charities in Warland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One. Giving our best to our customers and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. We now go to our conversation with head coach Jesus Down of the Worland Lady Warriors now on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. We're now joined by Worland Lady Warrior head coach Jesus Davila. Coach 4 nothing against Sheridan yesterday, but some good things coming out of it. What do you hope on the quick turnaround that you see in the early moments here against the defending state champs, the Cody Phillies? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, the first thing that I'm looking for from the team is, is how do we come out, right? The first five minutes, ten minutes, what is our intensity like? I think that that's something that we struggled with yesterday. You know, uh, a lot of the times we were second to the ball, and today we want to be first to the ball. We want to win 50-50 ball. So that just initial first five minutes of the game, can we set the tone right from the start? And do you look to any specific Lady Warriors out there to help you set that tone? Yeah, so I look to uh, the leadership that we have in some of the older girls, uh, some of the senior girls like uh, Nayeli, you know, uh, Taylor, um, you know, even Yahida, you know, to just come out with a lot of intensity um, being fiscal right from the start. And what do you expect to see from the Phillies as kind of the continuation of the same for this team that's always been competing for state titles pretty consistently yes. over the last handful of years? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a team that, you know, we can learn from as well. You know, they their defensive intensity, the way that they pressure is, is very high all the time. Um, and then, you know, they, they're skilled players. So, um, you know, I think that as we... Uh, approach this game i think we have to just have a really good defensive um game today you know and and i talked to the girls about our defensive responsibilities and and we just got to be strong defensively 
Yeah, and, and speaking of that defense, is there anything specifically that you look to after the game last night against the Lady Bronx of Sheridan that you really want to see uh, fixed today against the Phillies? Yeah, so I talked to the girls on the right up here. I met with every single one of them, and I, I said, look, they're going to put a lot of pressure on us on our defensive third because they will push everybody forward. They'll leave three people back. And, and we can counterattack. I mean, how quickly can we move the ball once we win it, right? And, and keep possession of the ball. Uh, whether that means that we gotta dribble away from pressure, that means that we gotta put ourselves in a good, uh, supporting, uh, place to support the person on the ball. Uh, but I'm looking for us to be able to move the ball better today. Um, I felt that yesterday we struggled with that and I think our chances or the few chances that we had, it came from us being able to move the ball. Jordan McGamey joined here by Worthen Lady Warrior Coach Jesus Davila. Coach, any final thoughts here as you get into the final preparations, take on the defending 3-8 state champs, the Cody Phillies? Yeah, I'm just excited. I've been waiting for this opportunity for a long time now, and, and it's just crazy how now it's just here. So we just have to enjoy it. we got to compete, and we got to have fun. Lady Warriors and Phillies coming up here in minutes on the McGamey Broadcasting Network. Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here. Thanks, head coach Jesus Tavila, for giving us a few minutes of his time. Always excited out there, no matter the result, no matter uh, what goes on out there. Always brings a lot of energy, and we appreciate that. So we'll uh, glad we talked to coach pregame again here at Cody High School. They have to go off-site for a JV game, so we won't have a post game uh, with the coach. We'll talk next week about uh, whatever happens uh, in this contest between the Lady Warriors and the Cody. Phillies. As mentioned, just a handful of minutes or so away from the National Anthem starting lineups and the opening kickoff. Those last two brought to you by the Northern Miami News. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Let's get into our keys to the game here on this fine Saturday Late morning turning to early afternoon. Warriors, uh, Lady Warriors keys to the game today. They need to, first off, defend with ferocity. That is uh, just marking your player out there, having great defensive responsibilities. Defend with ferocity here against a potent Philly offense. Number two is win more 50-50 balls. Day. You heard the coach talk about it. They were second to the ball all uh, all too often yesterday, so they need to be the first to uh, more of these 50-50 balls. Got to win 
More than half of those 50-50 balls if you're the Lady Warriors. Final one, complete the counterattack. The Lady Warriors had some counterattacking chances yesterday where the last pass just didn't connect or the shot just went over. So the Lady Warriors just want to finish off that counterattack, which will probably be their best chance at some offense today against this Phillies team. You'll hope for some uh, standard buildup as well throughout through the passing, through the midfield, connecting some of those passes. But I think the best of those opportunities are going to come when the Phillies defenders are really on their back heels trying to track back with the counterattack for the Lady Warriors. So today's Lady Warrior keys to the game is going to be defend with ferocity. Win more 50-50 balls and complete the counterattack. McGarvin and Taylor pregame show wraps up next with the National Anthem. Then we'll get into our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening kickoff right here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. And welcome back here uh, at the broadcast booth, heading towards field side on this beautiful early afternoon at Cody High School. Uh, two squads getting ready to uh, honor the nation's anthem here momentarily as they'll line up along the sidelines. And then we'll get into our starting lineups. Of course, we'll bring you live the uh, national anthem here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Try to get you as close to old glory as we can here on this Saturday afternoon. So again, Lady Warriors and Phillies in a match a rematch of the 3A state title game uh, should be a fun one here today. Lady Warriors going to be in their away whites today with orange numbers, the WHS and Spear across the front of those jerseys for Cody in their home blues, gold numbers, white trim. Cody across the front of the Phillies jerseys. So the players and referees will walk out to uh, midfield here uh, as they will uh, line up, and then the National Anthem will go, and we'll keep it live for you here for the National Anthem on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. That's going to wrap up our McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, WorlandWYO.com, 307-347-4271.
As the ladies make some noise out there at midfield, we'll turn it over to the PA and those performing today's national anthem. National anthem completed there as the Lady Warriors and the Phillies honor our nation's anthem as we uh, get ready for varsity soccer here. We will get into the uh, starting lineups. So our, nor our starting lineups are brought to you by the Northern Wyoming News. And again, for the... Uh, Cody Phillies will do our best to uh, recap their starting lineups, but for the Lady Warriors, uh, they will go this way. Number two, Kiara Wolfenden. Number three is Kinlan Brown. That's number seven, Emma Hunt. Number 10, Nayeli Aguayo. Number 14 is Paige Lundgren. Number 18 is Taylor Simmons. Number 20, Katya Navarro. Uh, number 21 is Kiara Warren. And then number 22, Jasmine Espinoza. And number 20, uh, 23 is Yahida Aguayo. Then, of course, number 99, the keeper in the net, it is Sam Segetti here today. So that is the Lady Warriors introduced there. And now the Cody Phillies will be introduced, and we'll turn it over to the PA here. So both teams are introduced there, our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups, and now we'll get to our Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Again, we're going to mention that uh, Gid just got the rosters for the uh, Phillies uh, prior to the game, didn't get it from head coach Marion Myers, uh, hadn't quite constructed it, uh, didn't get it via email uh, before today's game. So we'll focus on the Lady Warriors um, today. Should there be any Philly goals, we'll try to update you on the goal scores throughout this game. It's time for our Northern Wyoming News starting, uh, uh, excuse me, kickoff as the Northern Wyoming News weekly publications on Thursday. Online subscriptions are available as well as a classified classifieds each and every week. And they bring us our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening kickoff. You can also find the McKamey Broadcasting QR code uh, on that uh, in that 
weekly publication on Thursdays. Hover your phone's camera over that. The link that pops up will take you to our McKamey Broadcasting homepage. Phillies and Lady Warriors set 40 minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as 0-0 to kick this thing off. Referees getting ready. Check the nets. Check the sidelines. Head referee checking his watch as this one just set to get underway here on a Saturday afternoon from Cody High School. And there's the Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff. Lady Warriors will send it back into the defense. Now to the outside. Quick touch out there for Lundgren. Phillies take over. Trying to run it up to the corner. Going to end up running too long for the Phillies and out of play. So it'll be a goal kick for the Lady Warriors. So Lady Warriors sent it up with Hunt. Get it over the first set of Phillies now as Katya Navarro tries to turn on it, and the Phillies going to keep it in play here. As, again, you'll see them work wide. The uh, out-of-bounds line's almost near the track as the Phillies send it in. Dangerous ball there, just headed through. It'll go wide now. It'll be a goal kick for the Lady Warriors. In 0 0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, as we'll uh, do our best to get you any Philly names that we pick up along the way. Hunt sends us up right into the middle, though, here for the Phillies to bear down on the net. First shot of the day, a hot one there, and Sagetti up to the job. I believe she saw that it was going wide, but it was a hot shot there by Natalie Wenke there for the uh, Phillies. Again, the Lady Warriors going to be. Going to be defending potentially a lot of this game as Hunt sends it forward again, brought down by the Phillies, trying to be intercepted here near midfield. Phillies with it. Aguayo going to try to take this one away, but the Phillies turn, move up the field through the midfield now. Good passing through ball, though, going to be intercepted here by Hunt and then trying to get it up for Nayeli Aguayo. Pass is a little short. Now the Philly is going to try to chip it through, and that one's going to run out of the uh, back past the end line. Another goal kick coming for the Lady Warriors. 37-45 up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. 0-0 here in the early parts of the contest. Hunt again sends it up, looking for Navarro. The Philly is going to... Bring that down on the left foot there of Ellie Talich. First throw in for the Lady Warriors. Going to come in now, touch for Simmons to the outside. Now the Phillies chip it over the top for chance for the Phillies to run on to this one. And they do, stopping on a dime. Now up top, just outside of the 18. Could be a chance for a shot here. It's at the feet of Reisowitz. And a great save by Segetti there on the shot. And the... Phillies end up sending that out of play across the far sideline. So first real legitimate shot, or second legitimate shot there for the Phillies. Lady Warriors on the throw in. Can't keep that one in play. So a far sideline throw in here. Billy's going to charge up that far side. They're going to try to send it into the 18 here, hold things up. Lady Warriors going to try to do some defending. Comes to the top of the 18, intercepted there. Lady Warriors a chance to run out of trouble now. Trying to go to the outside for Navarro. Great through pass there, and Katya's off and running here up the near sideline. Katya going to send it into the 18. Now chance at a cross here, and good defending in the end by the... Phillies, and I think they're going to call this one a corner kick, and they will. So just went out of play here. So it'll be a near side corner kick coming up for the Lady Warriors. Again, we talked about that counterattack there, and that's exactly what the Lady Warriors are looking for. So they'll bring some players forward. Still have four back here near midfield, though. As Lady Warriors will bring it in. Yahida Aguayo will do the uh, kicking here. It'll come in from the left side of your screen. Foot to it, 
Across the 18, ball down. Lady War is going to try to latch onto this again with Simmons and got a piece of that one. Good defending there in the end by the Phillies. It was a good cross by Aguayo. Be a throw in now for the Phillies across the near sideline. See if the Lady Warriors can stay on the front foot. Ball thrown in now. Down to the feet there of Wanky. She's got a chance. Now they're going to throw a ball up ahead for the Phillies to chase. And good job in the end. Great defending there by Lady Warriors' Paige Lundgren. Phillies near sideline throw in again. Again, with our uh, position here, can't get all the way to the corners, as you can kind of see the, uh, the window here inside the uh, visitors' radio and broadcast area. Phillies throw it in. Chance to turn on the ball now for Reisowitz. And then can't connect the back pass there. Phillies, though, back onto it. Going to work it through the middle of the field. Shot here. Now Navarro's going to step through. Katya Navarro out on the run. You had Aguao dropped it back off. It's going to come for Simmons, but it's intercepted there by Reina Jones. And Jones going to come up ahead. Lady Warrior back four. Going to have to do a job. Nice defending there. The Lady Warrior is able to clear it off at least momentarily. That's Reisowitz again to reset the chance. Ball comes in. Chance to turn on it now. Phillies shot just over the bar there as that was Wanky again. She's an, a dangerous attacker, but just sent it over the crossbar and out of play for another Lady Warrior goal kick. 34 minutes left here in the opening half on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Sixth minute of the game, heading into the seventh minute now. Hunt again sends it. This one right up the middle, though. Header forward. Good defending on the outside for the Lady Warriors. That one stays in play. No, they're going to say it did go out of play. So I'm able to track that one down. I think that was woofing in out there. Throw in. Phillies can't collect that hot throw. It'll be a Lady Warrior throw in. First change of the day for the Lady Warriors. Elena Studi going to come into the game. Taylor Simmons going to jog over to the sideline. So first change of the day for head coach Davila and the Lady Warriors. Throw in now. Lady Warriors are going to try to work hard to get this one, but ball won there by Grace Hayes. Now the Phillies into the center of the field, going towards the top of the 18. Good defending there by the Lady Warriors. Going to pop it out now. The Lady Warriors try to win those 50-50 balls, but that one's taken away by Hayes. I'll chip it to the outside. Lady Warriors just getting to a head to it there with Lundgren. Now the ball's sent in looking for that cross, but out of bounds it goes beyond the end line there as Phillies couldn't uh, wrap their foot around it on the outside right. I think that was Jones trying to send it in as goal-kicking duty still going to be taken on here by the defender Emma Hunt wearing number seven for the Lady Warriors. Send it out of the, off the uh, penalty box there. And then the Lady Warriors have to get back defending quickly. Now the ball's loose on top. Touch here for Hayes. Tries to go to the outside. Lady Warriors had it cleared, but right down to the feet of another Philly. Turns back towards the middle of the field. Shot there, blocked away in the middle by the Lady Warriors, and it's finally cleared away. Only as far as a Philly are around midfield here on the far side now they'll go through a, for a through ball there to the outside 50 50 chance they're going to be a goal kick good job there on the defending by the lady warriors to deny the attack on the outside left again phillies have only one player inside their defensive half head coach down that talked about that on the pregame show that's why the counterattack going to be so important lady warriors Trying to chip this one away from the Philly offense. Good pass to the midfield. A takedown there by Aguayo. That was Nayeli Aguayo as she took down a Philly. I think that was Reisowitz there who took the foul. So now a dangerous free kick here. Sagetti going to have to be aware of it. This one looks to be about uh, 22 yards out. Hot shot in. Lady Warrior Wall does a job there. Then chip through and it'll be a goal kick for the Lady Warriors. Reisowitz puts her foot through that one. Sagetti now going to 
take the uh, goal kick. We're going to see Ali Stamatakos come into the game for Elena Studi. So the uh, freshman forward. As Lady War is trying to something a little different from the goal kick, but turn it right back over. But then Stamatakos is able to take it away. Katya Navarro here trying to go to the midfield, but turns it right back over to the Phillies. Dancing with it is Reisowitz. Go to the outside left, trying to chip it out there. Be a long run for the Phillies, unable to collect it over there. The Warriors couldn't complete that throw in, so Phillies have it back now. Thrown towards the midfield here. Lady Warriors going to try to put on some pressure there with Woofenden. Phillies stride forward into a dangerous area, but cleared off there in the end by Espinoza. Now this, again, is where the Lady Warriors, if they can force a turnover, could be an issue as the uh, Phillies going to have to chip it to the outside. Good pass there in the end, but right past the uh, feet of a Philly and out of play. That was off the uh, foot of Reina Jones. So the Lady Warriors chance to come forward. Ball in for Katya Navarro. Couldn't bring it down on the first touch, though. So the Philly is going to try to spark a play forward. Espinoza got a foot to it. Now the Lady Warriors going to have to deal with it. Hunt launches it high into the air. Takes a bounce. Nayeli Aguayo gets ahead to it, and now Aguayo going to have it, chip it here to the outside for Navarro, and a good step in, good intervention there by the Phillies defensively. Lady Warrior near sideline throw in now. Going to be taken in by Lundgren, Samatakos. That one bounces nicely for her as they get it up ahead for Yehida Aguayo. Now it's Nayeli up ahead for Katya Navarro, trying to slow things up. Philly defense trying to be up to the task here, and... Sent it away across the near sideline. And actually came off of Navarro last. It'll be a throw in for the Phillies. Quickly up now for the Phillies, but going to be sent right back in possibly for the Lady Warriors. Let the Phillies take back over at midfield. Now a chance to run with it. Got a breakaway here up the far sideline. Ball's a little bit loose out there for the Phillies, but able to keep it in play. And now a chance for Lady Wars to turn it back over. The Phillies have it. Good pass to the top of the box. Hot shot here. Segetti up to the job, though. Great save there for Sam Segetti. Had a little bit of pace on it there. Had to end up saving it with the gloves. Good catch. Goal kick ends up rolling out of bounds across the far sideline, though. Changes coming here uh, for the Phillies. Looks like uh, Kelly Joyce going to come into the game along with Kristen Boyson. Avery Williams and Raina Jones come out. So far sideline throw in. Lady Warriors defend that well with Woofenden. So kind of walk it up the field here on the throw-ins. Now looking for a long throw up that far sideline. Lady Warriors able to defend it out of play there with Kinlan Brown. Well, the uh, Phillies able to, again, kind of get it up that sideline throw after throw. Now a dangerous one into the box. So Getty has a chance here and will come and claim that one as the uh, trying to head that one on there was Phillies' Grace Hayes. Couldn't do it, though, and a goal kick out. Again, the Phillies got to be smart with their good touch. Now a through ball, a lot on it here. We're going to see. I don't think the Phillies have any chance of tracking this one down, not on the artificial turf. That's natural, natural grass. Maybe it slows up a bit, but that one... Did not. We'll see another change to Lady Warriors. Maddie Robertson into the game here. She'll check in for Paige Lundgren. So again, the Lady Warriors going to have a goal kick. Hunt still going to uh, put the foot to it here to the outside, looking for Aguayo. Kind of an awkward bounce for the Phillies to deal with. It's in midfield. Aguayo still trying to fight for it. 50-50 ball. Nice little shoulder drop there to take it away, but taken right back by the Phillies. Now a touch for Hayes. Aguayo had it. Chipped forward. A little give and go here. Segetti's going to have to come and claim this one and does. They're trying to send in Natalie Wanky there for the potential attack. Hayes, interception at midfield. Now they're going to give it here for Stamatakos. Going to send it for Navarro, but a little too much pace on that one. I like the idea from Allie there, but 
Just a little bit too much on it from the freshman, so near sideline throw in now for the Phillies. Sent up. Nice uh, collection that time by Kristen Boyson. And now a chance to run up the right side for Wanky. As she'll send it now, she's going to look to send it into the 18 with the right foot. Does get across it. Lady Warriors Hunt tried to deflect that one, but it ends up being an own goal as Hunt was trying to send that one out of play. Sagetti appeared ready for it, but came off Hunt into the back of the net. Philly goal here in the 15th minute. one nothing. Cody Phillies, and again, that'll be an own goal charge to Emma Hunt there in the back. Is again talking there with Sagetti. She's frustrated, but uh, the Lady Warriors playing well here in the early parts of it. That one kind of just unfortunate. It was a great run up the outside by Wanky. Now the Lady Warriors again will send it into the back line, trying to set up this send, set up this offensive counterattack. But the Phillies straight downhill again to the outside. Again, one nothing Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as we head towards the uh, 16th minute ball into the middle here. Another chance for the Phillies. So Getty going to have to try to deal with it. Good kick save there, and the Phillies unable to latch onto it. Great kick save by Sagetti in the end of an eye. A quick second for the Phillies, and should be a goal kick here. Just came off of a uh, Cody Philly last, and... Taylor Simmons going to come into the game now, send Kiara Warren to the uh, sideline. And that one came out of the uh, came out on the goal kick a little too quickly there for the referee wanted to complete the substitution and we are ready now to get back to play. So Hunt will send it forward. Another good touch there by Hayes gets it to the outside for the Phillies. Now we'll try to send it across the top of the 18. Good defending by Hunt. Now she'll get it for Stamatakos. Going to try to get it up ahead for Yehida Aguayo. Lady Warriors, a chance to run here. Send it to the outside and just a little too much on it from Yehida there. Is trying to send, I think that was Wolfenden out there, trying to send her off on a run. We mentioned those will kind of be the best chances for the Lady Warriors as the Phillies were definitely outnumbered back there, relying on that defense to come up with a play. Phillies make a change. Raina Jones back into the game. Far sideline throw in here for the Phillies. Brought down by Aguayo. Going to send it high into the air here. A little 50-50 ball between Yehida Aguayo and a couple of Cody Phillies. There'll be a Lady Warrior throw in. Lady Warrior's going to try to come up with an answer here as the ball comes in. Looking for Nyelia Aguayo. Ball chipping around now for the Phillies to deal with and able to just get out of trouble momentarily. Should be a Lady Warrior throw in there after the kind of the double deflection. Lady Warrior's going to take it quickly now. Aguayo looking for Nyelia inside. He's going to spin to the outside here, but the Phillies able to take away. Nice nice strength here for the Lady Warriors. Ball on top now as is going to try to get onto it. Now it's a shot across the face. A goal by Simmons. Just drug it wide there, the near post. Good shot for the Lady Warriors. So definitely see some of the attacking prowess there for the Lady Warriors on the counterattack. This one ends up being a shot. Wasn't on goal, but first really good shot of the game for the Lady Warriors there as Simmons had a chance trying to send it hot across the ground, but just a little bit wide of the near post. Phillies send it out of the goal now, trying to find it up ahead. Grace Hayes got a head to it momentarily. Now a long ball over the top. Robertson's going to have to deal with it, trying to take it to the outside. Wanky uses the pace there to latch onto it just outside the 18, then sends it in across the danger area. Nice clearance there by Hunt and Espinoza to finally turn away that attack, but the Phillies going to try to set it up again here. Ball in play. Down to the feet of Wanky momentarily. Then Stamataco is able to intercept it here and now keeps it in play. Touch back. Lady Warriors going to try to switch the field here for Nyeli Aguayo and do. Now trying to get it outside, but some good defending in the end there by Talich. Lady Warriors launch one in the air again defensively, but now they'll send Mia Broussard to the outside. Nice defending out there by the Lady Warriors. I think that was Brown that, Knocked that one out of play, but a near sideline inbounds. Looked like a foul throw there, but nothing whistled. <laughs> Mix.
Maybe an offside call, and it was. Trying to see this near side AR, it was. So an offside inside the 18-yard box there for the uh, Phillies. That'll give chance for Hunt to clear it away with their left foot. And I try to come up ahead, try to get it through the Philly midfield, but could not. Ball's being moved to the outside by Broussard. Double team coming. Ball tipped around now, bouncing around. Now get it for Simmons. She'll try to get it for Aguayo. 50-50 chance here. Lady Warriors still trying to get out of the midfield area. Ball to the outside. Stamataco steps in to kind of take that one away. Navarro didn't attack the ball. 50-50 chance. And now Navarro does have it. Katia going to run with it, trying to be bounced off it. And Navarro still a chance to maybe latch back onto this one as the Phillies and Lady Warriors, they exchange possession here. Lady Warriors trying to get it across the middle. And finally, Hayes is able to clear it, but the Lady Warriors step in there with Hunt, able to get it now for Simmons. Intercepted momentarily, but Simmons takes it back. Now Nayeli Aguayo. Chance to go the outside, wide open out there as the Lady Warriors trying to set it into the 18. Now it's in a tough area there, trying to pass back for Nayeli Aguayo. Chance of the counterattack here for the Phillies. Hot shot up that far sideline. It's going to roll out of play, though. Lady Warriors doing good on the exchanges there. Again, that was woofing it on the outside. Those trying to hook back up with Nyelia Guayo. Lady Warriors just trying to connect the final pass here as the Lady Warriors loose touch there. Wanky latches onto it again, uses her pace to move forward. Now going to chip it in here. Segetti, an easy save as the uh, Cody Brock came bearing down on there. She and Segetti come together. Nothing, no malintent in that one as Wolfenden going to try to bring it down off the chest and does, but intercepted by Hayes. There's Simmons who was working harder. Nyelia Aguayo. Now the ball is loose here heading towards the top of the 18. Little give and go opportunity. Segetti is going to come out and claim it. Just able to send it away now for the uh, Lady Warriors and Stamatakos. Nice job to Intervene there, but taken back by Hayes. Chipped to the inside. Chance to get on the right foot. Closed down there by Hunt. Good defending by the Lady Warriors. Now get it outside for Nyeli Aguayo. Chance for the Lady Warriors to run with it, possibly. Woofing in onto the ball here. Moves it to the inside. Lady Warriors just couldn't quite connect on that pass, but Navar or Simmons a chance. Now Stamataco's going to chip it over the right side. Chance for Nyeli Aguayo to run after it, and the Phillies going to keep it there in play. Good touch there as... Sends Aguayo sliding out of play, but it'll be a Lady Warrior throw in across about midfield on the far sideline. Changes coming in here for the Lady Warriors. It's uh, Laura Carmona into the game. In about 18 20 left here in the opening half. Puts us in the. Uh, 22nd minute of this first half. Throw in, headed away by the Phillies, but now the Lady Warriors a chance to get on top, but that's going to be a foul there on the Phillies as Raina Jones going to get whistled. A little bit too much on the uh, shoulder there, a little shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder game, but the referee says free kick for the Lady Warriors just inside the attacking half, so a chance to bring some players forward. As Hunt will come forward can just see her on the right side of your screen. Ready to take the free kick. Just going to try to put it into a dangerous area here. Beat that first set of midfielders. Hayes, though, headed it away. Touchdown, though, for the Lady Wars. But now Hayes steps in, and it's a chance to run for the Phillies. Hayes going to try the through ball here. Touch dealt with by Robertson. And Navarro, I think, might have been offsides as she had got onto that. Simmons to the outside. It's just going to run out of play there on Taylor. But good defending by the Lady Warriors on that hard counterattack from the Phillies as Evelyn Agadal checks into the game. For the Phillies, near sideline throw in again. Talich going to send it high, but Robertson heads it away here. And the Lady Warriors actually have some numbers, but the Phillies great Job by Talich after having the throw intercepted, came back and made the defensive play. Well, he's trying to exchange some passes here in the midfield as that was Hayes who stepped on the ball a little bit awkwardly. Navarro receives it in the midfield, send it outside for Taylor Simmons to chase after, and the Phillies just going to do enough to deal with it. Be a near sideline throw in for the Lady Warriors. 
Matty Robertson going to take the throw in. Robertson going to try to get it there for Navarro. Couldn't complete the pass, but Katya trying to guard this one here along the sideline. Nice job to feed it into the middle of the field. Nayeli Aguayo, chance to run on to it. Good defending there as stepping across was uh, Lily Hogan. So Lady War is going to have a far sideline throw in now. It'll be taken by Carmona. So Carmona getting ready to take this throw in. Gets it now, touch into the midfield for the Lady Warriors, and nice job by Simmons to protect this one. She'll move to the outside right, try to chip it out there. Came off of one Lady Warrior, and now the Phillies have a chance to counterattack up the far left side. Lady Warrior defense trying to work back now. Ball coming towards the midfield. Good block by the Lady Warriors. Ball bouncing around loose. Top of the box now. Kick it to the outside for Wanky. Quickly back down to the feet of Beaudry. Beaudry, forward, pass there. Lady Warriors, Stamatakos back, a chance to do some defending. Steps on top of it. They're able to change direction quickly now. Navarro, if she can keep it, make a move, and then she's going to give it for Stamatakos to chase after. But uh, going to be Hogan back doing the defending for the Phillies. Then interception there momentarily by Simmons. Stamatakos is on it. Now back for Taylor Simmons. Now into the midfield. Lady Warriors again. they got to come to the ball. That one uh, get intercepted in the midfield by Jones. She had gotten called for the foul, and that one came up and tagged her in the forearm. That's what the referee indicated. So the Lady Warriors a chance for a free kick at midfield again with under 15 to play here. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard opening half, and Emma Hunt own goal early on. The difference uh, with the Phillies on top. And Hogan in the back, they're going to let it run through for the uh, Philly goalkeeper to deal with. I think it's Maya Davis in goal for the Phillies. And a good ball forward, but it's touchdown comes only for Navarro. And back doing the defending there was Beaudry. Now Robertson able to intercept, trying to get it for Simmons. Going to come to the middle of the field. And the Phillies just intercept it, but recycled in by Espinoza. Then a header forward by Navarro with the Phillies back on to it. Now it's going to be Stamatakos to take it away here for the Lady Warriors. Stamatakos one-on-one on the outside, sends it in across into a dangerous area, cleared away there by Hogan. And it'll be a corner kick for the Lady Warriors. So a couple of times on the counterattack, been some danger for the Lady Warriors. That was a really nice ball by Stamatakos into the uh, about the top of the penalty box there was where it would have gone. Hogan was frustrated she gave away the corner, but it was actually some really good defending. Ball comes in from that far side. Lady Warriors chance to latch onto it there, but it's going to bounce through after a touch off of the uh, Philly goalkeeper, Bo, or uh, excuse me, Davis. So a far sideline throw in for the Lady Warriors, see if they can keep it on the offensive front foot. Ball's kind of loose in the midfield here. Chance for the Phillies to get onto it and turn and run. Wanky now at midfield. Lady Warrior back four, going to have to do a job. Robertson covering the inside as Espinoza's uh, trying to guard. Wanky going to go for a cross, totally flips the field here. The Phillies unable to track it down out there, though. Again, Wanky dangerous with that speed up this uh, near sideline, near touchline, as the Lady Warriors going to have a throw in there. But, again, dangerous area for the Lady Warriors going to try to get out of. And the ball comes to the top of the 18-yard box. Chance for Agadal to get a shot, but the Lady Warriors turn it away. Now a turn at midfield. Aguayo going to use some strength there, try to fight through two Philly defenders. Now back for Hunt into the middle there, kind of into no man's land. Philly is going to be turned away again by Hunt, though. High ball over the top. Chance for Katya Navarro to chase this one. And Hogan, a good kick forward, going to find Hayes. Touchdown off the midsection there. Going to send a run to the outside. Good defending by Brown as she's able to send it across the uh, far touchline. Two changes coming for the Phillies now. Broussard and Reisowitz back into the game for the Phillies. Again, referee having the uh, Phillies just take an extra second here as they're going to get some players off the field. They would have had 13 there. Would have been a little, a little bit of an advantage. So we're into the uh, 29th minute of this opening half. one nothing. Phillies Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. 
throw in for the Phillies. Chip it to the top of the 18. Lady Warriors chance to deal with it. Robertson, good foot to it. And the, lady, the Phillies recycle it forward, trying to get it into the 18. Good defending here by Espinosa, just trying to take it away. A nice job. Good step in here by Aguile. Then goes to the outside. Philly's going to try to send this forward up the near touch line, but outside of the reach of Broussard. And now Yahida Aguile going to come into the game for Carmona. So Laura Carmona, quick. Uh, Quick session there in as Yehida will come back into the game. Near sideline throw in for the Lady Warriors. Just cut off there off the right side. You'll see it come in from Matty Robertson. Going to try to go up the field here looking for Navarro and then sent high into the air by the Phillies. And now a chance for Broussard to get onto it. Heavy touch, though. That's going to go all the way out past the end line out of play for Lady Warrior goal kick. Good thought by Broussard, but a little heavy touch there. Going to send it out of play for another Lady Warrior goal kick. Just about to head inside the final 10 minutes of the opening half here in this one between the Phillies and the Lady Warriors. Hunt with the left foot to it. Only finds Broussard out there, though, and then good job by Espinosa to step on top of it. Aguayo going to try to be the first to it. 50-50 chance. One by the Phillies, then through the foot there of the uh, check-in Reisowitz, but the Phillies have it again to the outside. Bruce R. going to work here on Roberts. A nice job by Matty to take that one away here for a moment, then took it away again, but the Phillies send it forward. Nice job by Jasmine Espinosa to send that out of trouble here across the near, near side. So another throw in here for the Phillies. They're going to try to get it here to the top of the 18. Touch the inside. Lady Warriors do just enough defending out there. Stamatakos takes it away and find it for Yehida Aguayo. Bring it under control now. Philly's going to try to recover defensively. Go outside, Stamatakos. Touch through. Nice job there by Alias. She'll drive forward here against the Philly defense. Freshman steps through again, sends it forward. Now towards the top of the 18, going to send it in. Hot shot there. Nice save by Davis in the end, but what a good run there by Stamatakos up the far sideline as she shows why she presents such a danger. Young player, but a lot of talent. And Lady Warrior is going to try to take this away at midfield, but now a chance to run here. Robertson's going to have to get on her horse here to catch Broussard, but Broussard gets it. Cross the face of goal. Segetti lost it momentarily, but able to collect it. Good save by Sam Segetti on the other side. So some good offensive action here from both sides. Phillies overran that one. A chance for the Lady Warriors to run onto it, but good job to intercept it there was Talich. And now they'll send it on a through ball, and Segetti will have a chance and does smartly come out and claim that one. A little bit too much on it. Segetti now up ahead for Aguayo. Phillies have a few defenders back, but a chance for the Lady Warriors to run. Trying to switch the field here for Navarro. Now she has a chance to run on this one, use that pace. Katya to the outside, couldn't keep it in play, though. So it'll be a Philly throw in here along the near side. Gets Hoffman into the game for head coach Jesus Davila. As Taylor Simmons comes out, needs a quick hit on the sideline. Ball comes in, and Aguayo able to block that one off on the throw in. Robertson going to look for options. Come back now for Hunt. Sends it forward into the middle of the field. Aguayo able to step onto this one. You hide onto it. And now it's deflected off of the Philly defender, but Davis will be able to come up and claim this one. She's not even going to pick it up. Tried to send it forward. Navarro chips it into the middle of the field. Aguayo tries to get it. Now it's a long ball over the top. Chance for the Phillies to run as Espinosa trying to do the defending. Nice job by Jasmine there to deny the ball forward from Beaudry. She was on a good run, but it was some good defending. But the Phillies right back on the attack. Robertson. Good interception, sends it to the outside, was looking for Stamatakos, but Allie Nunn able to catch that one as, again, it was a good good send away defensively by Robertson, but it'll be a far sideline throw in now for the Phillies. Then tapped out of play there by Broussard. 
So Lady Warriors have the throw across the uh, far sideline now. Ball comes in for Aguayo. Trying to use the power, but it's taken away by the Phillies and last touch by Aguayo and out of play. So Phillies trying to get it forward. We'll bounce throw in, intercepted by Stamatakos. Chance for Yehida Aguayo to get onto it. Hogan, though, does... Just enough to get it away, and now the Phillies a little miss kick there, but able to two on the second chance as Talich drives to the outside, has a couple of options there, see which one she picks, tries to go into the middle of the field, and that one deflected away there as Hunt had her arms in a bit of a dangerous area there. Sorry for the uh, camera work, but uh, just outside of the 18 there, so no, uh, no penalty, although she had the arms well raised there. Throw in from Talich, past all the Phillies. Nice job by the Lady Warriors to turn it away. Now Aguayo on top of it, going to throw it up for Yehida. Has a defender in behind, has somebody running up the outside. It's Navarro, still onside as Katya turns there. No, they're going to say she was offsides. Just got in on the back shoulder of the Phillies. If Aguayo's first pass had gotten through the defense of Talich, Navarro could have been off and running. In the end, Philly defense does just enough with Talich. So Phillies have a free kick here on the defensive half as Ivanoff will send it forward. Lady Warriors finally do intercept with Hunt. Now a chance for Aguayo to bring that down. I think she got the ball lost in the sun there momentarily. It was right at the last second. Couldn't quite find the ball, but the Phillies unable to Hook up a pass there across the uh, far sideline. Ball comes in for Stamatakos. Find it now for Yehida Aguao. Chips it to the inside for Nayeli. Nayeli going to look for one more pass here, possibly, as she'll step past a defender now. Nayeli trying to go to the outside for Katya Noaro, but the Phillies intercept it there with the uh, defender, Kimber Chrysler. And now touch to the middle. Lady War is able to intercept. Ball comes ahead for Nayeli Aguao and a hard challenge there by Talich. That'll send Aguayo to the turf. And Lady Warriors have a free kick in a fairly dangerous area if they can uh, complete this first pass. It's a good ball forward by Kira Warren. Now Aguayo going to send it forward. That one into a dangerous area, but a little bit too much air underneath it. As Stamatakos was trying to run underneath it, but sails out of play for a goal kick. Grace Hayes back into the game for the Phillies. We're down to the 3.30 mark of half number one on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Phillies still on top, one to nothing here on the Emma Hunt own goal early on. Ball out of the goal now for the Phillies, trying to bring it under control. A little over-the-head kick there for the Phillies, but ball comes back now for Stamatakos. She'll have Hayes trying to defend her there. Ball comes into the middle for Aguayo. Now quickly running onto it. As Hoffman had a chance, but then Navarro's going to keep it. Turns back to the inside as Aguayo tries to step through. Good defense there by the Phillies as they'll come now to midfield with Hayes. Chance to try to go for a through ball. Nice job by Espinosa to turn it away. But now quickly Hayes back with it for the Phillies. Quick touch inside out here as Robertson's able to intercept. Now a chance for Warren to get it out of her feet. Now Hoffman stepped over, left the ball behind, though. And now Hayes going to try to take it away and does for the Phillies. Robertson does a good job of stepping in on that one, though, keeping it away from the uh, Phillies' Maley Marriger. Ball comes in. Espinoza again with a good job here. Navarro has a chance to get it up ahead for Yehida Aguayo. Turns. Now I'll send it here to the inside. Navarro a chance to run onto it here for the Lady Warriors. Navarro on the left foot. Tries to take the shot but just couldn't wrap her foot around it. And wide of the uh, near post there. Great run again, though, by Katya. As the offense already clicking a lot better today for the Lady Warriors. The short passes, finding somebody to continue the attack. So the Lady Warriors got to like that. Warren going to come out of the game, and in comes Anaya Saavedra for the Lady Warriors. So goal kick for the uh, 
Phillies with a minute 30 left in the half. Navarro brought that down on the chest momentarily, but now ball over the top. Lady Wars, nice header there to deal with the ball coming forward. Now Espinoza comes in with another tackle. Stamatakos, good touch there. Trying to get it for Nayeli Aguayo. Got it here. Now it's a chance to run. Aguayo going to try to use her pace. Talich now just steps in there to get a good tackle in. Talich has been a Long-time player for the Phillies and now trying to come up the sideline. Nice job by Robertson to intercept that pass. It's still a near sideline throw in. Now Espinosa going to take it away again defensively and sends it forward. Lady Warriors, another chance to get the ball moving forward. Has Samatacos to her right. And now Aguayo's going to try to send in a shot from way outside. Had Samatacos on her right side there. Could have played a through ball. Trying to set up the offense. Still had about... 50 seconds left, but now it's just 40 left in the half. That's about all but going to do it here in half number one. Lady Warriors made a little bit of defending left to do. Phillies taking their time. 25 seconds on the clock as Ivanoff will send it away with the right foot. Past Hayes, intercepted here by the Lady Warriors, trying to get it up ahead again. Now taken back here by Aguayo. Chance for Stamatakis on the outside. Aguayo sends it up through the uprights. And over the crossbar and out of play. So Lady Warriors will head into the halftime huddle, trailing 1-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. A competitive opening half, an own goal. The only difference here in the uh, 3A Girls State Championship rematch against the number one and number two teams in the coaches and media poll brought to you by yopreps.com. We'll head to the half here, talk a little bit about half number one with uh, the own goal being the only difference, 1-0. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, Lady Warriors start. Starting to pick up a little momentum late on in half number one. Heading towards halftime here at Cody High School. It's Phillies 1, Lady Warriors 0, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. This is Whirlin Warriors Soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Hello. I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Whirlin Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Whirlin, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. 
Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. And welcome back inside the broadcast booth here at Cody High School. Halftime score, Cody Phillies 1, Worland Lady Warriors 0, an own goal early on. Uh, charge to Emma Hunt, the difference in this one. It was really, it was a great run to the outside for the Phillies. It ended up being a, a great run out there by Natalie Wanky. Usually really put the Lady Warriors under some pressure sometime. And Hunt was just trying to defend. She was trying to knock it out of place. Segetti was in good position, but it just came off the leg of Hunt. And Segetti could do nothing about it as it sailed past her uh, left hand and into the back of the net. That's been... Really about the best chance for the Phillies. They had a couple of shots uh, from distance. Lady Warriors have taken some shots from distance. But really, since that own goal, the Lady Warriors have maybe generated the better opportunity as Katia Navarro getting some good runs in there. Uh, Stamatako's getting some good runs. Nyalia Guao controlling it through the midfield. It's really been a well-contested soccer match thus far uh, in this one in the 3A state championship rematch. Again, these are the early days. These two teams are going to perform differently throughout the season, but this one definitely a highly anticipated game. And again, Lady Warriors, uh, you know, have much more talent than the Pinedale Lady Wranglers, a, a, a program that really has just gotten off the ground in the last few years. But considering this is an offense that had just put 15 in the back of the net, so it was coming in with a lot of confidence. I'd say that defending was great. Uh, a player in that first half after having maybe a tougher day yesterday, Jasmine Espinoza has been on it today. She's had a lot of interventions. The senior uh, back there in the defensive midfield is really uh, defended well. Maddie Robertson as well. Uh, Emma Hunt, is, again, aside, it was a tough own goal, but she's trying to make a defensive play has also been good for the Lady Warriors. When they've gotten maybe into some trouble where the Phillies have gotten into a dangerous area, they've done a good job of deflecting, blocking shots coming through, and Segetti's come up with a couple of, of good saves uh, as well. Uh, for the uh, Phillies, I'd say that uh, Ellie Talich, one of the reasons the Lady Warriors didn't have their best opportunity of the game as uh, she was able to intervene on a Yehida Guayo pass that got through the second time to Katya Navarro, but unfortunately was offsides on that second time, was flagged by the uh, near side uh, referee. So that was kind of the difference there in the uh, opening half of soccer here from Cody High School. Just about uh, four minutes or so till we get going in the uh, second half. Again, want to thank our sponsors here. They don't get quite as much play during the uh, during soccer as we have uh, continuing halves, of course. So I uh, want to thank our uh, great sponsors, Pinnacle Bank, McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, Stellar Roofing and Construction, Sage Creek, Land and Cattle, uh, Jay's Detail, Hasco Industrial Supply, Admiral Beverage, King's Carpet One, uh, Bryant Honey, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, Sally's Classic Pizza, of swing trucking, McGarvin and Moberly construction, and diesel pickup specialists. If you're interested in advertising here in the month of March, we're offering $50 off your advertising package if you sign up and pay in full through the soccer season. Just a couple of months to get involved. Of course, we'll be moving into the uh, looking ahead towards the 2024 2025 year this summer. But if you want to get involved, see what it is like to advertise here on McKamey Broadcasting, kind of trying to spark some business for these local companies. Uh, hit me up, Jordan McKamey at McKameyBroadcasting at gmail.com, or you can uh, give me a call or a text at 307-431-1468. Again, $50 off your advertising package when you sign on and pay in full through the end of the Warrior and Lady Warrior soccer season. That's going to do it for a halftime show. On the other side, we get you going with second half soccer. Phillies 1, Lady Warriors 0, competitive second half coming your way here in the 3A Girls Championship rematch from Cody High School on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. 
Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Second half just about to get underway here from Cody High School. Phillies on top, one to nothing. Lady Warriors were uh, attacking the uh, north goal, going to attack the south goal here in the second half. The uh, Phillies will have the uh, first touch of the uh, soccer ball here in the second half. Believe that's uh, Wanky on top of the ball right now for the uh, Phillies. Well, she'll send it back, try to get the offense going early for the Phillies. Lady Warrior defense going to look to continue to stand tall here and try to generate some of those counterattacking opportunities. Wuffenden, Yahida Aguayo, Taylor Simmons, Nyla Aguayo out there among the other uh, starting 11 back out there for the Lady Warriors. Phillies with it. Going to work it into the uh, back four here and try to set up the attack. They'll run to the outside. Aguayo trying to intercept there. Nice job by Simmons. Bounces it to the outside. Now turns back to her inside. Can uh, find a Lady Warrior across the middle. Now trying to hook up with Nyeli Aguayo. Good drop off there for Nyeli. Now get it for Taylor Simmons. Trying to send it through here to the outside for Wolfenden. Unable to... Latch on to it, though, and now the Phillies send it up the sidelines and save back in here. Simmons quickly has Hayes snatch it away there. So the Phillies running the field now, going to try to go back into the middle, and there's Espinosa again with a great interception for the Lady Warriors, and on the outside, Navarro able to turn on the ball, going to go into the middle now for Aguayo, but just missed her on the pass that time for the Lady Warriors. Phillies right at midfield now. Grace Hayes with it. Drops it back off as, like, Navarro tried to take that away with the Phillies will have it up the far sideline. See if they try to drive there towards the 18. They do. It's a foot race on the outside. Good defending there by the Lady Warriors and Paige Lundgren. Far sideline throw in. Dangerous area here for the Phillies. The Lady Warrior defense has to be up to the job. 
Hayes tries to get it in here. Lady Warriors just able to chip it away, but the Phillies across the face of goal here. Another chance possibly for Wanky as she leans in a foot. Lady Warriors slice this one away towards the uh, far sideline, and it's going to go out of play. But it'll be a Philly throw in, so Lady Warriors still having to do the defending. Actually, Lady Warriors uh, got the throw, so they said last touch by the Phillies and touch the inside here, Wolfenden. Now trying to get it up for you, Haida Aguayo, but able to be taken away, but Wolfenden through the legs of a Philly defender. Now turns the inside, going to try to send it up ahead for Nayeli Aguayo, and now quickly out was the uh, Philly goalkeeper. A nice job by Nayeli to turn to the inside, putting the Phillies under pressure and a shot just over the crossbar there for Nayeli Aguayo. And again, apologies about the camera there. Bumped it <laughs> right before Aguayo took that shot. As that was uh, Maya Davis that initially thought about coming out but then had to think better of it. And great drive inside there by Nelly as uh, she and Yehida Aguayo connected well. So Lady Warriors getting that attacking chances there. Simmons kind of got on to that goal kick momentarily, but now the Lady Warriors chip it forward. Yehida Aguayo trying to get onto it. Now ball over the top here. Hunt trying to send it away, but Hayes now going to send it through. Lady Warriors have to run this one down with Kinlan Brown just trying to defend it towards the corner and has to play it out of play for a Philly throw-in. So Phillies have this near sideline throw-in, waiting for some movement. Finally comes in. Lady Warriors trying to defend here. Ball going inside the 18-yard box. Good header there by Espinosa again and then brought down by Warren. Now Phillies try to reset the chance. Touch the inside. Nice defending out there by the Lady Warriors and able to chip it away here. And Navarro kept it in play as well for the Lady Warriors across the far sideline. Bring it in now for Aguayo. Back for Navarro, but just couldn't quite connect the pass. Warren, touch there. Ball launched into the air. Brown got a half header there, but it's going to end up dropping down now for Avery Williams. And the Phillies, Williams steps over at the 18. Sends it across the middle as the Lady Warriors, it's going to be able to be scooped up by Sagetti. Again, it wasn't an intentional back pass as Simmons had that one spin off the right foot into a dangerous area, but Sagetti was ready to make a play as Aguayo has this one pop over her head, but going to get it up ahead for Yehida. And now a chance to touch it back for Nayeli. Back for Yehida, trying to chip it to the outside, but nobody's going to be there as Talich is able to get it back for Williams here on the near sideline. Touch ahead. There for Molly Reisowitz. Now across the uh, middle here, Sagetti's going to come out and claim that one. Nice job there by Sam Sagetti. Good read as we have 35-24 left on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard here in half number two. Ball out of the goal here for Katya Navarro. Trying to go here into the middle. Hayes intercepted momentarily, and then a bad touch here for the Lady Warriors. Able to recover, though, nicely in the end there was the Lady Warriors. And now the ball quickly up ahead here for Wolfenden. Going to go across the field here for Navarro. Chance of the Lady Warriors to run. Get it now for Aguayo. Back for Navarro. Steps over, creating a chance possibly, but Hayes is going to be able to intercept it there in front of Nayeli Aguayo. Now sends a hot shot up forward. Phillies running on to it here. Chance now is Sagetti going to come across. Nice, confident, and strong goalkeeping there from Sam Sagetti to deny the chance for Wanky and the Phillies. Great job there by Sagetti. Ball forward. Bounces over a Philly head. Wolfenden going to try to come into the middle to take it away from Hayes. Let's it run through. One touch to the outside, Williams. And now Lady Warrior is going to try to take it away. Good job by Aguao just to get a foot to it. Warren going to run up, take on Hayes. A little 50-50 ball. Warren ends up on the deck. Ball dropped off. Philly's going to launch it forward now. Hunt. Good job to intervene there with a good foot in and a nice touch up ahead there by Warren finds Aguayo. Now Aguayo going to send it up for Warren to chase after. Philly's able to defend it away, but now Aguayo got a foot to it, but spins away now for the Philly, for the Phillies, and nice job to step across that one by Lundgren. Still a chance for Cody to come forward. Then Espinosa, nice job to drive ahead and send that one high into the sky. Classy touchdown there by Hayes, and the Phillies have to get it midfield. 
Hayes forward. Hunt tried to take it away. Wanky now going to turn to the right side to the outside now. Chance to send it into the danger area. And the Lady Warriors momentarily away. Hazen swipes across it outside the right post well wide there. And Sagetti going to have the uh, goal kick here possibly taken by Hunt. Change coming in. Maddie Robertson comes into the game now for the Lady Warriors. Paige Lundgren comes to the sideline. Kiara Wolfenden also comes to the sideline with Ali Stamatakos coming in. Good pace to start this one in the second half as we're just a little more than seven minutes into the second half with the Phillies on top. one nothing. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Hunt sends it forward trying to get past the uh, Philly midfield. Couldn't there, but Espinoza stepped in moment, momentarily. Now a shot here for the Phillies. It was pushed away, and the Phillies still have a chance. Nice defending in the end. She might not have known much about it. But the Lady Warriors ending up to be coming off the backside of Brown there. She just was just on that corner to deny Williams a second goal for the Phillies. But it will be a corner kick now for Cody. I think it's be wanky to send this one in for the Phillies. Ball comes across, working all the way to the top of the 18. Lady Warriors, that one bounces over Stamatakos. Outside for Reina Jones. Now Stamataco's chance to step in on it and take it away. Trying to get it up for Yehida Aguayo, but it's intercepted by the Phillies. And they're going to call an offside here on the uh, Phillies on the recycle chance. So Lady Warriors far sideline throw in now. Or excuse me, free kick. Ball comes over the top, trying to get it up for Yehida Aguayo. Stamatakos battling with Talich. Now up ahead, Robertson had it momentarily. Now turns away from trouble. Turns a second time, trying to get it up ahead, but the Phillies able to try to send it forward. Wanky, and now a high boot there. Lady Warriors couldn't get it defended. Wanky to the outside for Williams. Lady Warriors just do enough there to get it away. Now a chance at the counterattack here for the Lady Warriors. As Simmons is running towards the midfield, has a go out to the inside. Now she'll go to the outside. Give it off for Stamatakos to run on to. Keeps it in play. Alley a touch here past one defender, but in the end, the Phillies do just enough to take it out of play. Be a Lady Warrior throw in. It ended up being pretty good defense there by Ivanov on the outside. A throw it across here. Yehida Aguayo has it down on the touch. Now going to try to get it back out. Nobody home there for Aguayo. Not sure who she was looking for, but Hayes a chance to run now on the counterattack. Nobody able to step up just yet as the Lady Warriors try to set up across the back four. Pass forward. Trying to go for a shot. Sagetti's able to come forward to deal with this one. Goal kick to the middle of the field. Back forward for the Phillies. Good touchdown. Hayes now a chance. Trying to feed it through the middle there. Lady Warriors it was Hunt doing the defending. That one ends up hitting Hunt. Wanky inside as Sagetti comes forward and an offside on the outside. Flag there by the AR on the far sideline. So Hunt going to be able to take this free kick here. Dangerous counterattack there from the Phillies as we had back and forth action up the field. So Hunt with a kick coming towards the outside, trying to find Aguayo. Ball between Philly and Aguayo. That was Williams is able to take it away. Now it's down to the feet of Reisowitz. Back for Hayes. Goes to the outside now. Chance for the Phillies to send one in, but good defending out there. Now the Phillies step through. Lady Warriors almost have it away as Robertson had it taken off of her feet, but able to earn a Lady Warrior throwing across that far sideline. Ball looking to come in for Stamatakos. Forward again by Hayes, and then Lady, the Phillies just get it forward. Good defending by Espinosa to send it out of play. Paige Lundgren back into the game. Yehida Aguayo going to get a break now for the Lady Warriors. So a throw in for the Phillies across the far sideline. 
Thrown towards the corner flag there. Header out. Phillies back on to it, though. Trying to get it across the 18. Nice job by Espinosa. Step in front again. Now it's Navarro. She'll use the pace to go to the middle of the field. Phillies did get a foot to it, and Hayes able to reset the chance, but tried for the through ball too much on that one. Out of play will be a goal kick for the Lady Warriors. Ball up ahead now for the Lady Warriors out of the goal, but Hayes is back on to it. She's been highly involved here in the second half, and now they're going to try to get it ahead for Aguayo. Talich forces her to go the outside for Stamatakos. A little 50-50 ball there against Ivanov. It's a throw for the Lady Warriors. Robertson will come ahead to take it here for Worland. Throwing up ahead. Hayes is able to win a header. Comes to the middle of the field. Touchdown by the, lady, by the Phillies, but intercepted again by Espinoza. Couldn't get it to the outside, though, for Lundgren. The ball in the middle of the field. Heavy touch there by the Phillies, and Lady Warriors a chance to clear it off, but right back at them here up this near sideline. was going to go out of play for a Lady Warrior throw-in. Going to be taken here by Brown. Brown throws it in for Hunt. As Hunt's able to take it off the feet of Wanky, then... Right back to the Philly offense in the midfield. Wanky collects it top of the 18, turns and shoots. Hot shot there, but just wide of the near post. So Lady Warriors tried to get a throw it into the defensive back line. Hunt was going to let that one run past her, but Wanky was there and ends up getting the uh, shot there and just wide of Sagetti's near post. It's a really good tackle initially by Hunt to take it away from Wanky and then just got recycled back there into the mixer, and Wanky got a good foot onto it but didn't find the back of the net. Hunt sends it away. To the outside it goes. Simmons, now a good ball forward here for the Lady Warriors as Aguayo comes onto it. Talich trying to defend. Ball comes into the middle. Hoisted forward by the late, by the Phillies. Hayes stepped through. Lady Warriors going to have to do some defending here. Espinoza to the outside. Lady Warriors trying not to give up the corner. It'll be a throw in. Nice job by Espinoza, who's done some really good defending here today. Phillies, another chance to throw it into the 18, and they do. Comes across. Espinoza able to clear it away across that far sideline. And another throw for the Phillies. 25-34 left in this one on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard in the second half. Lady Warriors trail it by a goal. And Lady Warriors going to earn a goal kick there. Good defending in the end by, I think that was Stamatakos out there on the far side, able to get the Lady Warriors a goal kick, try to relieve some of that pressure. So Hunt on to it again, going to try to find somebody out of the goal. Sends it forward. Aguayo tried to get ahead to it. Then Warren able to send it across the far sideline, but it'll be another Philly throw. Ball up ahead. Touchdown by the Phillies. Back to the outside, trying to turn it inside. Good touch there by the Phillies. Now they got a chance on the outside, but Robertson going to try to let this one bounce and does. Nice job to protect it there to get a goal kick again for the Lady Warriors. Warriors just trying to get something going here. Phillies have had the better of the ball recently. Comes ahead now, bouncing awkwardly, but Talich has it down, settles on to it as she'll go past Aguayo. Phillies to the outside, touch the inside. There's Espinosa again to send it away across the far sideline. Throw in from the Phillies. Find it to the outside, turn it back to the inside, top of the box, Hayes. Good pass to the inside, chance for the Phillies to run forward. Nice defense by Robertson, took it away, and now a turn away by Navarro. Got Aguayo in the middle, had a player on there as Talich. Aguayo doing a good job of protecting the ball now, and she'll turn to the outside and send it up the field. 
And the Phillies do just enough there as Simmons touches it down. And stepping through here is Chrysler. So Chrysler running forward, the defender. Warren leaning on her there, trying to force it to the outside. They do into the middle. Nice job there by Espinosa again to get a head to it. Ball recycles up top, headed towards the outside, and that'll go out of play for a goal kick. Looks like Hoffman going to check into the game for Simmons. All four for the Lady Warriors. Great touchdown now here for Paige Lundgren. Gets past one. It's a chance to send Stamatakos forward. Good defending by Talich. Stands tall, the sophomore. Now running forward with it. Tried to get it through the middle, but nothing there. Now the Lady Warriors a chance to get onto this one with Stamatakos. Over the top it goes. Stamatakos just plays it off the uh, foot that time of Ivanov. Oh, no, they're going to say it actually came off the uh, Lady Warriors last. So Ivanov will take the throw in now, looking for a Philly up this sideline. Header out that time by Warren. So Philly's on the far sideline again, trying to stay on the front foot, trying to get it out there for Boyson. Now the ball comes into the center here. Espinoza steps in front of it again. Nice job there by Jasmine. Talich tries to head that down. Ended up being kind of a missed header, but ended up being a great takedown for the Phillies, and Hayes goes to the outside, goes for a step over. Warren doesn't bite on it. Ball to the top of the box, and Hunt just has to swing wildly at it. It'll be a corner kick for the Phillies. So set piece opportunity here for the Phillies with 20, about 21 and a half minutes left in this game on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Phillies still on top by a goal. Ball comes across the face of goal, but it's outside the end line. So they're trying to tuck that close to Sagetti's goal, but in the end, danger is averted for the Lady Warriors. Skin remains 1-0. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard on the Emma Hunt own goal early on in the first half. Hunt on it now to go for the goal kick. This ball comes into the middle. Wanky couldn't get a foot to it. Now a chance here on the outside for the Phillies, trying to connect a pass. Hoffman tries to intercept. Ball going to bounce awkwardly for Brown. Heads it towards the outside. Going to be another corner kick for the Phillies. So one from the far side, now one from the near side here for the Phillies. Wanky is on it here for the Phillies. Puts the right foot to it, high here towards the top of the six-yard box. Nice header there by Espinoza. Ball comes out. Aguayo was going to try to get on it. Now it's an awkward shot there. Wow. And the ball hit the uh, crossbar of the field goal of the uh, actual football field goal. So that was a great ball in as Beaudry that got a great foot to it, and it was just going to be an awkward one for uh, Sagetti to deal with as – Woofenden's going to come back onto the field here, going to replace Katya Navarro. Navarro had a nice end to her varsity basketball season and has stepped into the soccer season well. Hunt to the outside, didn't get much on that one, and now it's pushed forward by Broussard. The ball goes out of play here, and it'll be a Lady Warrior throwing off the deflection. Lady War is going to go for the throw in, going to try to touch it down for Hunt. Went underneath her foot, and now it's Espinosa to step across and deal with the danger. So another Philly throw in. Let that one run past, and the Lady Warriors Hunt swipes at it. Got rid of it momentarily. Now it's a 50 50 chance here between Brown and Broussard. Broussard going to bring this one in on a throw, but there's going to be a change, couple of changes first. 
Evelyn Agadal in for the Phillies, and you had a guile back onto the field now as Kiara Warren going to come to the sideline. Eighteen twenty-seven left here. Chance up top for Wanky to take a hard shot. Sagetti, great goalkeeping there as she kept that in front of her. Didn't let it spill away for a second chance and then sends it up the field here. Ball for Ivanov and Yehida Guao was there, but it's going to go out for Hayes. Or actually, seeing the check in Agadol. Tries to step past Robertson. Great tackle. Oh, they say not a great tackle. As they say, they got the. Uh, as Robertson got the player, not the ball. So a free kick for the Phillies, about 30 yards out, a little bit beyond. Chance again now here for Ivanov to send it in. Towards Sagetti, deals with it, bounces it onto the hands and now secures it. As Sagetti will go to the outside, it's going to bounce towards Ivanov. Touchdown, and then it gets past Woofenden, who was trying to take it away. Nice little half touch there by the Lady Warriors, but Ivanov again sends it in and outside the uh, far post there. So just a goal kick upcoming for the Lady Warriors. So again, it'll be Hunt on it. Emma Hunt with the left foot now. Goes into the middle. Heavy touch here from the Phillies. Espinosa lifts it forward as Yahida tries to head it on. Talich bounces it to the outside of the feet of Broussard. Steps past a half challenge there from the Lady Warriors. And nice job that time by Lundgren to get forward. Now a chance for Hoffman to run here up this near sideline. A little too much of a touch there, and Hayes is able to take it back as they'll go to the Midfield, Reisowitz with it. A couple of few defenders here for the Lady Warriors, but Reisowitz able to get it to the outside now for Ivanov. Wolfenden going to try to take it away from her. Chipped ahead, Lady Warriors with Espinoza send it out of play, and it's going to be a Lady Warrior throw. She was able to play it off of Agadol and out of play. So Robertson looks ahead trying to get the uh, ball in, but it's going to be a couple of substitutions here as Warren and Simmons going to come back in. Lundgren and Hoffman off the field. So far sideline throw in now, Lady Warriors. 15.42 to go, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, but ball ends up going out of play. I'm going to say possibly the ball. He's trying to figure out where the ball went out of play. So it's a Philly thrown across the far sideline, thrown in here. All bouncing around, and they're going to say a free kick for the Phillies. Might have been a handball. This one about, again, 25, well, call it 30 yards from that far side for the Phillies, bringing it in now. Again, I think Ivanov's going to have the duties here. So the Phillies stuff the 18-yard box, trying to get it up top. Great header there by Reisowitz, but a great save by Sagetti. It was right in the center of the goal. You would expect her to make that save. Ball bounces over a Philly defender, and Aguayo has a chance to run up the outside. Now she'll step in front of a defender. Here goes Nyelia Guau towards the top of the box, sends it in, and Talich is able to step on it there and turn it away momentarily. Now Talich going to be taken away by a Guau into the inside now. Kind of an awkward ball going to roll out of play, and it's going to be a throw-in for the Lady Warriors. Great run by Nyelia Guau here with... About 14, 15 left to go in this contest. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Lady Warriors looking for the equalizing goal here at Cody High School against the Phillies. It's been a well-contested game thus far. Throw in comes now. Going to look to get it for Simmons. Hayes has the pace on Simmons, though, and she'll step ahead. And nice job by Espinosa just to slow up the counterattack. But now Wanky going to step forward. Simmons trying to track her down to the outside. Now Broussard, nice job by Simmons, took it away from her momentarily. 
Now Broussard has it again. Good job by Simmons. Good defending there by Taylor, but it's right back now for Reisowitz. Across the middle of the across the top of the 18, Lady Warriors are able to intercept. So they come back now for Talich. Steps past Yahida Aguayo. Moves out to the right wing. Nice job. Good defending there by the Lady Warriors as it's taken away. Now the ball going to come up for Nyeli Aguayo. Chance to latch on to this one here. She will now. Lady Warriors, Aguayo across the face, a goal almost puts it in the back of the net there. Good goalkeeping in the end by Davis. She hasn't had a lot to do today, but came up in a big moment there to push it just wide of her far post. Lady Warriors got a corner coming in. They've had Aguayo free a couple of times, and it was a tough angle there for Nayeli, but she almost put it into that back post corner. Going to be a corner kick taken now. I think Stamatakos is on it. Raises the hand, rises right foot to it. Cross the face, a goal taken by Davis as she claims that confidently for the Phillies. Now sends it up the field. Nice job by Espinoza. Recycle chance here if the Lady Warriors can get on to it, but ends up bouncing nicely for Broussard. She'll dribble with it here. Heavy touch, but Brown couldn't. Couldn't interject on it. Now Broussard coming forward into the middle of the field. Segetti, that one bounced through her there. Somehow through the hands of Segetti. She's been so sure of it. Just took her eyes off it for a second, but rolls out a play for a Philly corner kick. That one again, kind of just a uh, def uh, just a defensive lapse there. I'm not sure Segetti thinks she just took her eye off it at the last second. And fortunately, the Phillies unable to get a foot to it because that would have been just a tap-in goal there. But the Lady Warriors have to defend another set piece here with 11.50 to go. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard still one nothing Phillies. This one's still on a razor's edge. Phillies bring it in from the far corner now. Across the face of Segetti's goal. Stamatakos a header to it. Now chipped away, and there'll be another corner for the Phillies. This one from the near corner. So Philly's set to bring this one in, and now might go, not sure, I thought they might go for a short corner, but there'll be Wanky out there to set it up. Brings it in with the right foot, high here towards the top of the 18. Phillies win the header, now touch it down, ball is loose. Hayes trying to turn on it, ball's still loose in there, and now a chance for Simmons to send it forward. Got a piece of it, but not enough as Talich will reset the chance. Gives it to the outside here to the midfield for Hayes, almost taken away there by Yehida Aguayo. Now the Phillies take another shot, hits the crossbar. That one just out, Phillies trying to reset it. Into the middle of that one again. Segetti couldn't do much about it. It was a great hit. I believe that was Reisowitz that got the right foot to it and slammed the crossbar. Now Lady Warriors still trying to defend here across the near sideline as Wankies will play it off of Stamatakos. And it'll be another near sideline throw in. And nice job by Stamatakos to step in front of this one. And Hayes comes across and kicks it out of play. It'll be a Lady Warrior throw in. Action on both ends here as we head towards the final 10 minutes of this one on a Saturday afternoon from Cody High School. Phillies on top, 1-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard on the uh, Lady Warriors' own goal. Ball bouncing around. It's going to bounce nicely for the Lady Warriors. Quickly up ahead for Aguayo. She'll work to the outside and stepping in front of that. If it hadn't been such a heavy touch, Guam might have gotten a foul call for, but now it's a throw in for the Phillies. Bounces awkwardly, comes for Aguayo to the outside and battling there for it. Going to be a lady or going to be a Philly throw in again. Ball comes ahead for Wanky. Stamatankos tried to take it away, but they'll go to the outside here for Raina Jones. Jones steps to the inside. Good defending there by Brown in the end. Stamatankos has it taken off of her feet. Ball chipped towards the middle. Yehida Aguayo tries to kick it away past Hayes, and now it's Hunt forward here as is going to try to take it away. 50-50 ball, and, and again, look like a 50-50 coming together there. It's a pretty favorable free kick coming for the Phillies as Hayes and Aguayo both wildly kind of swung at neither won the play, and then a foul called for a free kick, and again, it's in a... It's ways out here, though, 41 yards away from the uh, 
from the goal here as Ivanov will take it, send it in. Sagetti is going to come forward, let that one run past there as Winky was attacking it on the near post, but that chance fizzles away there on the free kick. 8.30 to go in this one. Still good action. Lady Warrior is going to come forward. Just a chance for uh, Simmons. Just got the boot laced up there, and we're ready to go as Hunt puts the foot onto it. Going to try to beat the Phillies to the outside. Bounces around, though, and down for Ricewitz. Going to the outside as Robertson's going to have some defending to do against Agadol. Going to try to turn it to the inside. Nice job by Maddie to get a foot to it initially and able to take it away for the Lady Warriors. And now a chance to run towards it here. Ivanov, a little 50-50 ball, and then Yehida Guao can't quite get it back for Wolfenden. And Ivanov steps through, puts a half shot onto it, and Sagetti bounces over her head and into the back of the net there. Ivanov, it was deflected. Sagetti came out to try to get it, but a high bounce off of the turf and into the back of the net, 2 nothing Phillies. So, again, off of the deflection there, that one will definitely probably get credited to Ivanov just because it was deflected on the way through. But the Lady Warriors, that's a couple of tough goals to go against them as neither of them have been really shots at goal. They've been – one was a deflected own goal, and that one was a very speculative shot from about 40 yards out as Yehida Agua going to send it over the top here, just going to try to challenge the Philly defense. And Nayeli's going to try to take this away. Stamatakos was trying to do the same, but the Phillies have it now running up the near sideline. Ball towards the middle. Hunt's going to be able to intercept, get it into the middle of field for Warren. And a touch to the outside looking out there for uh, Carmona, who was into the game. Now Agadol to the middle, intercepted by Robertson. Now the ball's going to bounce around. Hayes is able to step through at it and take it away for the Phillies. Forward, Wanky now on to it, the left foot, steps to the inside, turns with the right foot, and swipes it across the near post, wide of it, and out of play. Just seven minutes left in this one as the Phillies make a couple more changes. Remember, I have a quick McGarvin and Taylor pregame show between the girls and boys contest, and we'll have the Warriors and the Bronx in 3A varsity boys action coming your way next year on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. As the ball comes up ahead, Phillies had it momentarily. Espinoza able to send this one. I think uh, Simmons kind of caught the worst of that one, came across the face there as the referee just going to bring this to a, a stop real quickly, make sure we don't have a uh, need to go to the sideline. And uh, referee is going to send Simmons over to the sideline, so they'll stop the clock here momentarily as Hoffman will come in for Simmons. I think that's a referee's decision to take Simmons off. Simmons seemed like she was ready to come back onto the or stay on the field, but she's going to come outside here for a quick break, and the Lady Warriors will take a look at her there. Yahida Guao going to have a uh, free kick here. Well, actually, you're probably going to drop the foot, drop the soccer ball down, and do. And so here's Yahida Guao just trying to send it up the middle of the field, but Hayes intercepts. But then Warren chance there turns on it. Warren going to take it away back for Yahida Guao. Now going to look forward, throw it up a high here for Aguayo. Ball just bounced to the outside for the Phillies, unable to track it down, but it was good defending. There by the Phillies, number 20, Reagan Moss. Lady Warriors throw in along the near sideline here. Guao going to send it in, try to throw it over the head of Hayes. She's able to head it away towards the middle of the field, and Agadol latches onto it and strides forward into the attacking half now. Then a heavy touch here should be intercepted and is by Robertson as she'll run up the outside. Robertson just sends it up ahead momentarily. Taken away by Ivanov. And Robertson going to try to take it back and does against Ivanov, then turns it to the middle of the field. And to the outside, Aguao's going to try to get onto it. Talich had it momentarily and able to deflect it. Then Robertson again. And Talich knocks it out of play. Going to be Lady Warrior ball there with the far sideline throw in. Heading towards the five-minute mark here. Lady Warriors got to find it and find it quickly as Aguayo tries to go over the top here off the head. Phillies trying to do the defending. Aguayo almost back onto it. Now a chance again. Aguayo 
Sends it towards the middle of the field. As it'll be put ahead by Stamatakos. Her and Hoffman are kind of in the same area. And now Brown Ford. She'll chip it ahead, and Davis will have a chance to get on this for the Phillies. And she'll collect that one easily. Like the idea from Brown, just a little too much on it. As Davis sends it forward, bounces. Headed into the middle by Carmona, but picked up by the Phillies, and Reisowitz gets it ahead for Hayes. Hayes, good touch there, striding forward now, bearing down on the Lady Warrior goal. Hayes steps through, good defending there by the Lady Warriors. Brown was the one able finally to get it fully away. Hoffman put it through the wickets of Reisowitz, and then taken back away. Good work here by Hoffman. Gets it for Yehida Aguayo, and then has it taken away from her by Avery Williams. Then right back for Warren. Now it's Carmona to the outside for Stamatakos. And now she'll put it into the middle here for the Lady Warriors, and that one going to be a 50-50 ball between the keeper and Aguayo. And Davis able out to come out to that one and get it away. Ball towards the middle. Aguayo touches it down. It's going to be Hayes gets the second touch. Now Hunt steps through and now gets it ahead. Good ball here for Carmona. She'll go into the middle of the field for Yehida. Wow, heavy touch there, though. And then Yehida going to try to take it back away. Put forward here by the Phillies. And Robertson just going to have to go to the outside. Probably going to have to get rid of this one fairly quickly, but able to kind of dance around it. But then the Phillies do take it away. Towards the middle of the field for Hayes. Sets up against Warren. Now gives it for Reiswitz. Back for Hayes. Turns on it. Left foot into the middle of the field. Wenke then had it taken off of her right foot into the middle, though. Phillies back on top of it with Talich. Talich the outside for Agadol. Robertson trying to take it away and does. Then turns away from trouble momentarily. Gets it for Warren. And they're going to call a foul out there. So for a free kick, not sure why they didn't just let that play as an advantage there. But might have been an offside situation. So the Lady Warriors will have it back. Inside the defensive half, just 235 left in this one. Lady Warriors got to move and move quickly. Just got to try to throw everybody forward now. Ball forward past Agadol, and now to Reisowitz. Bounces down for Ivanov. Gets it past Carmona. And forward towards the corner flag. There's Espinoza again. Ball bounces for ta between Talich and another Philly defender, and Talich is able to get the foot through and send it forward. Now Hunt going to step across that one there in front of the Phillies, but now moving forward of the Phillies through the foot. Now a chance for the Phillies. Good job by Segetti, as it was Molly Reiswitz that was putting the pressure on, and Segetti sends it towards the middle of the field, but Talich able to intercept, but a Bad touch momentarily, and the ball hoisted ahead looking for Yehida Aguayo, and she's able to possibly get on this one, but lost out on the 50-50 ball. Quick touch here on the outside for Avery Williams into the middle, touched on by the Phillies, and Segetti will be able to come out and grab that one for the Lady Warriors. Just a minute 20 left now with the Phillies on top, 2-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Hoffman working against Reiswitz, took it away from her the second time again. And then a little bit too heavy a touch there as Talich goes outside for Agadol. Quick touch here into the inside for Hayes. She'll take on a deep shot here, but Segetti lets that one run past her. And again, with less than a minute to play now, Lady Warriors would need Lightning to strike twice very quickly as this 3A state championship rematch looks like it's going to end the same way it did last year at the state tournament with the Phillies on top. Two goals, and honestly, sometimes it's just the way the ball bounces for you. Emma Hunt was trying to take it out of play on a uh, – trying to turn it away with the leg and ends up getting the own goal. And then Ivanov on a deflected shot from about 35 yards out ends up putting it into the back of the net. And now the Phillies with it again, a chance for at a third. Ball taken away by Hunt momentarily, then to the outside. Good defending in the end by Hunt to deny a potential third. 15 seconds to go here, and this one is – so wrap up with the Phillies on top – 2-0 here as the final horn is going to go as the referee will hear it go. Final three seconds, two and one. Phillies didn't even really have to throw 
the ball in. They finally do, and the referee brings the whistle to the mouth, and the two shouts of the whistle brings an end to the game. 2-0 in favor of the Phillies of Cody High School. A well-contested game again for the Lady Warriors. They've just yet to find the back of the net now across a pair of games, but... Again, building throughout this one as uh, they'll go and support the uh, Lady Warrior JV squad off-site as we'll get ready to head into a quick post-game show. Well, actually, we'll just head into it. It was pretty uh, pretty simple for the uh, statistics. Lady Warriors, uh, no goals in this one, 2 nothing in favor of the Phillies. Two goals coming own goal for off of Emma Hunt early on in the contest. Then a uh, Maley Ivanoff. Goal that uh, came off of a deflection that bounced over the head of Segetti. It was just one of those that had an awkward spin on it. Segetti came out, thought she could get to it, bounced over her head and out of play. So that's the way this one ends on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. 2 nothing in favor of the Phillies Lady Warriors. Much improved even just from yesterday, though. Defensively, Jasmine Espinosa, perhaps, uh, I mean, defensively player of the game, she... Got plenty of headers out. She was able to defend a couple of times with the Phillies coming downhill and had a lot of good clearances uh, for the uh, Lady Warriors. Nyla Aguao was active again on the offensive side. Lady Warriors had a couple of good chances, just couldn't quite finish it off. But the through ball chances were definitely there for the Lady Warriors in this one. They fall one nothing on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. We'll take a break here on the other side, jump into a... McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here as the Warriors and Bronx will warm it up about 20 minutes away from the opening kickoff between the Warriors and the Bronx here as the Warriors look to uh, start perhaps another streak as the uh, long winning streak came to a close yesterday against Sheridan in a one to nothing loss at Warrior Stadium. They'll try to get back on the winning track here against the uh, Bronx of Cody High School. That wraps up our Lady Warriors contest final score one more time. Cody Phillies 2, Orland Lady Warriors 0. That wraps up for the Lady Warrior game. Warrior soccer comes your way on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. 
And welcome back here into the broadcast booth. Jordan McKamey with you. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Warriors and Bronx just about a quarter of an hour away from getting going from Cody High School. Lady Warriors falling 2-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Warriors 80 game winning streak across six seasons came to an end yesterday in a 1-0 loss to the Bronx. But uh, you talk, we talked with head coach Ron Overcast afterwards. Again, he talked about the effort of this team that they went down fighting and again some of emotions through that again it's been a long time since this squad has lost uh coach overcast was planning on calling it a career for coaching the uh Wyoming high school activities association hall of famer and lifetime achievement winner but he was uh, convinced to come back for another season and the warriors now with a streak behind them have a chance to define themselves uh, define themselves on their own here in the 2024 season we'll see if they can finish off their first goal of the season, Bronx a little bit short-handed today um, for the uh, Cody Bronx. Is they're a little bit short-handed uh, again? Didn't have the roster. We'll do our best to uh, try to keep it all square for you. But the Warrior Boys will try to pick up victory number one here in 2024. Again, we go back and check in on those. Uh, Coaches, polls from the early part of the season, again, you know, read into them what you want. Really, it's about the last year or, you know, about last year's uh, finish more that gives you that first look as the Warriors came in as number one, got eight of the 11 first place votes. The Warriors were followed by these uh, Cody boys as well. Powell's third, and then Torrington was fourth, and Douglas completed that. So, again, these two squads matching up in a 1-2 matchup, so a pair of 1-2 matchups here in 3A soccer. Phillies getting the better of the Lady Warriors, 2-0. Warriors are going to try to pick up the victory here out on the road and get to 1-1 one and one on the season after yesterday's 1-0 loss at home to the Sheridan Bronx. In this one for the Warriors, uh, it's really it's going to come down to who's going to get the goals this season. That's going to be the question. We talked to head coach Overcast post game, and that's what he mentioned Somebody's going to have to step up there. Gunnar Mascaro did put one into the back of the net yesterday, but was flagged for offsides. Uh, Caden Scheibel was forward as he was put in as a sophomore into that forward role. Had some uh, had some good runs, didn't really have any chances to shoot. The Warriors had a couple of set pieces. And again, in early season, it is so hard to get those set pieces. Rice Drewshiner had a couple of chances to put it into the danger zone, but unfortunately just had a little bit too much ball, a little too much air underneath the ball. So that was kind of the difference uh, in the game. So we'll see if the Warriors can maybe execute on those set pieces a little bit better in uh, Bull Jeanette here today out on the road against the number two Bronx here in a 3A conference battle. Again, the uh, winner of this one going to be Going to be very happy with the early season performance. Again, we uh, looked at the uh, girls' soccer scoreboard from uh, yesterday. Now we want to at least uh, head and try to look at the uh, boys' performances yesterday and see how the uh, Bronx did out on the road against Pinedale. Again, they would have been heavy favorites there. Uh, they ended up winning 5 nothing at, uh, at Pinedale. And again, the uh, yesterday, uh, nobody else in 3A, uh, well, 3A play, the lander at Jackson game was postponed until the 19th of March of this month. So then it was just 4A, 4A games. And today, uh, number three, Powell is at Pinedale, of course. One, two, Whirlin and Cody here. 3A Buffalo goes to uh, 4A Sheridan. Uh, those are the 3A games that are being contested uh, here today and then a couple other teams at the uh, Gillette and Rock Springs Soccer Jamborees. So the Warriors are going to look for win number one uh, here on the 2024 season. We'll continue to get ready for it as we're now just about 12 minutes away from the starting lineups brought to you by the Northern Wyoming News and the Northern Wyoming News uh, opening kickoff. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, WorlandWIO.com or 307-347-4271. Talk to one of their talented real estate specialists about any of your housing needs in and outside of the Bighorn Basin. McGarvin and Taylor pregame show rolls on next. This is Worland Warrior Soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. 
Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Again, you're going to kind of see that uh, green disc out there to uh, throughout this contest as they set up, uh, I think it's a filming situation for the uh, Cody Bronx. So you'll see that throughout the game if you're wondering what it is. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Number one, Merlin Warriors versus the number two, Cody Bronx here in a Always anticipated matchup against uh, teams that have seen a lot of each other over the last uh, few years. Of course, the Warriors five-time defending state champions. 80-game winning streak across six seasons came to a close yesterday against the Sheridan Bronx. Bronx score with 16:30 left in the game against the uh, Warriors. The Warriors are able to find a finish against Sheridan. But, again, good, good team there. And head coach Ron Overcast said, he, you know, or streaks, they do always come to an end. Uh, Got to process them, but at the end of the day, he said if they're going to play like that, the Warriors, then if the game, if the streak's going to come to an end, at least it's with the players giving it all out there on the pitch. So that was the uh, story there for the Warriors as that streak comes to a close. And now this team, again, with the streak behind them, chance to kind of define their own season and define their own identity as a team that searches for a six consecutive. Uh, state title the Cody Bronx again have uh, come up short a couple of times in 3A here over the last couple of seasons going to try to see if they can get one past the Warriors early on and uh, set themselves up as potentially a favorite heading towards the uh, state tournament this season which will take place in May so the Warriors and Bronx just about ready to uh, get going here from Cody High School about seven minutes till the starting lineups and the opening kickoff brought to you by the Northern Wyoming News uh, as mentioned Cody 1-0 on the season 5 nothing win over the uh, Pinedale Wranglers Warriors 0-1 on the season a 1-0 loss at home to the Sheridan Bronx so Warriors trying to 
send the uh, Phil, the uh, Cody Bronx to a one and one record to pick up their first win of the season and trying to put their first goal of the season in there. Kind of was the same story for the Lady Warriors. Had a couple of chances to uh, make it a first goal of the season, but unfortunately uh, could not get it into the back of the net in there. Two nothing loss to the Cody Phillies just a little bit earlier. McGarvin and Taylor pregame show wraps up on the other side here with the keys to the game for the Warriors at Cody High School. This is Worland Warriors soccer on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Whirlin Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Let's jump into our Warrior Keys to the game for today as we wrap up the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here at Cody High School. Warriors Keys to the game. Continue the high energy effort. As we talked to head coach Ron Overcast yesterday, as long as this team puts effort in, he feels like this is going to be another great Warrior soccer team, but it starts with the effort and the athleticism on this team. There's a lot of athletes, and coming out of those athletes, they're going to find a hopefully another Warrior finisher in terms of getting the goals and that effort on the defensive side just to deny the Cody Brocks. Execution on set pieces. Yesterday the Warriors had some chances on some free kicks as well as some corner kicks, and they were unable to convert on those, didn't really generate some really dangerous chances on those set pieces. So execution on the set pieces. Number three, good communication in the back line. Really, it was a communication breakdown uh, that really led to that goal yesterday for the uh, Warriors again. I think it was Cooper Cannon coming back, coming back trying to defend well, Brian Caballero was coming out. Ball was bouncing awkwardly, and just a little miscommunication back there deciding who's going to go after it, and the Bronx were able to move to the inside and finish off uh, that goal to uh, defeat the Warriors 1-0. So Warriors keys to the game today. Continue the high-energy effort, execution on set pieces, and good communication in the back line. That does it for a McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate. Worland, WIO.com, 307-347-4271. Talk to one of their talented agents about any of your real estate needs in and out of the Bighorn Basin, 347-4271. McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate. On the other side, we'll get into our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening kickoff as Warrior Soccer comes your way in minutes on the McKamey Broadcasting Network.
The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. And welcome back inside the broadcast booth here. Jordan McKeamy with you. Just about time for our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups. And again, tell you, Cody just put their roster together literally today. Uh, again, talk to uh, former uh, Warrior sports uh, sports director and Worland Chance Bond. And again, just got the uh, roster printed off today. So unfortunately, not going to be able to get the starters for the Cody Bronx. We'll fill them in as we uh, receive them. Uh, out on the field, but for the Warland Warriors, they'll start this way. Number two is Caden Scheibel, a sophomore midfielder. Number three, Fisher Martinez, a junior forward. And in the midfield, number four, Cooper Cannon, was more in a defensive uh, role. The sophomore, another junior, a defender. Number six, Mason Decker. Colt Weber, number seven, the uh, sophomore forward. And it's a junior defender, number eight, Roman Para. Number nine is Brody Teal, the junior defender. Another junior, Drew Schneider, wearing number 10 in the midfield. A uh, attacking midfielder, number 13, the senior, Tyshawn Swalstead. Then it's the senior midfielder, number 22, Owen Page. And in between the posts, it is number 99, Brian Caballero, the junior goalkeeper for this Warriors squad. So Scheibel, Martinez, Cannon, Decker, Weber, Para, Teal, Schneider, Swalstead, Page, and Caballero for the uh, Warriors. And again, we'll uh, see some players filter into the game. Yesterday we saw Gunnar Mascaro into the game. Uh, Keegan Bush checked in into that game yesterday. Chase Harris as well. We'll see if head coach Overcast goes any deeper into the bench than that. As both teams are just huddled up, we're a little bit past the uh, 2 o'clock uh, scheduled kickoff, but they'll uh, wrap up their uh, warm-ups here and their conversations on the sidelines. So those are Northern Wyoming News starting lineups. Again, Northern Wyoming News, Thursday publications in print and online subscriptions available as well as classifieds in the sports section each and every week. You can find the... McKamey Broadcasting QR code, scan your phone over that, click the link that pops up, and that'll take you to our McKamey Broadcasting homepage. While you're there, make sure you subscribe, give the uh, video a like, each of the live videos really does help us out, uh, spreads the message as well. Share that link. You can copy and paste the link uh, yourselves, so just go ahead and do that if you if you are able to for the uh for the day. Again, we have a couple of people that really do post. Uh, we're on uh, McKamey, at McKamey Broadcasting on Facebook. That gets us some of a uh, – we'll usually post the links there. Uh, so that will be one way that you can also find out about uh, the games. But, again, if you can share that link, subscribe, just gets our numbers up, just makes us more visible and easier to find for all Warrior and Lady Warrior fans. So, again, the starting line is trying to look here for the uh, Cody Bronx. We're going to kind of try to piece this together. Going to be uh, Carter, Gale, Lucas, Morris out there, Carter, Thompson, uh, Gavin, Rocky. Then it'll be Colby, Balio uh, out there. Number eight is uh, Nicholas Varian. 
number 16 is Val Payne, number 17, Connor Moss, and one other uh, player out there, I believe it's uh, number 11, Jarrett Chrysler. So those are the starting lineups for the uh, Cody Bronx, but we'll also uh, go to midfield now here for the uh, starting lineups as the Warriors will be introduced first. So the PA man going to introduce them here, and so we'll go quiet on the mic here for just a moment and uh, get you going with the Northern Wyoming News starting lineup coming your, or the uh, opening kickoff coming your way next. You can see the uh, Warrior fans out there in the stands braving a little bit of the weather out there. We're fortunate to be in the... Uh, Broadcast booth today, a little bit more temperate up here. Was nice and sunny in this one. The breeze is out, so it's a little bit chillier here in Cody than perhaps at home in Whirlin. But the uh, Warriors were introduced. And they're just about, just about done introducing the Bronx. So the PA man just about done introducing here. So sorry off the mic some here during the uh, starting lineups as we get ready. 40 minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as our Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff coming your way here in just a couple of moments. Players will get set into their starting 11s. As you can see, just kind of down on the uh, Cody bench, not a lot of uh, backup players out there for the uh, Bronx here early on this season. As we get a peek over at the uh, Warrior sideline there. The ball at midfield now as the referee is going to go to either uh, goal here to make sure the nets are all set and squared away. We have our uh, fourth official handling substitutions here on the uh, sideline as well. Assistant coach Zach Limka walking over to the bench as well. Of course, head coach uh, Ron Overcast, also another assistant coaches, Rylan Mako, volunteer coaches, Jared Kraft, and Caleb Kraft for the Warriors. So referees just about ready here is uh, both of the sideline referees, the ARs, out to the sidelines here, and I believe we are ready for varsity soccer. 40 minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard pointing to the goalkeepers. Now to both sideline judges and the fourth official. We are underway in this one versus two contest. Warriors down to the feet of Swalstead. Going to try to feed it through the middle. Have that one deflected away. The Warriors going to clear it off now with Para. Lifts it high into the air to the outside. Scheibel trying to get underneath it. Unable to keep that one in play, but it actually bounces off of a Bronx, comes off Payne, so it'll be a Warrior throw in. Trying to go up the sideline, headed away again by Payne. So walking it up the sideline here is Decker, will try to go over the top, ends up with Scheibel, tries to get it back for Schneider. Does drop off for Page in the midfield. Now find Tyshawn Swalstead, steps past one Bronx here, goes to the outside for Schneider, trying for a little give and go there as it's deflected away by the Bronx. It will get to the outside, trying to clear off the danger, and finally the Bronx due to midfield. And a touch to the outside it goes. Bronx a chance on the uh, counterattack now. Ball up that far sideline. Decker doing the defending. A little give and go, but Decker able to seal his man off and set it up for a throw in across the far sideline there. Minute 10 into the game here. 38-45 to go. Bronx trying to get it into the 18. A little heavy on the throw right into the hands of Brian Caballero in the uh, yellow 
goalkeeper uniform today. Warriors, of course, in their away white jerseys. They got black numbers, black whirling across the chest there. Cooper Cannon on the near sideline with the throw in. Ball headed to the middle of the field here. Swalstead almost took it away from his man, but in the end, good defending there by Chrysler. But the Warriors take it back with Schneider. Now it's Decker who sends it up ahead. Awkward ball there for the uh, Cody goalkeeper to deal with, but does so nicely. So Gallagher, the defend, the uh, goalkeeper out there, sent it out. A little flat ball there. Page can't deal with it. Now the Bronx going to try to center it up and do connect in the midfield. Ball just headed up into the air by Para. Nice job by Roman to deny that ball going further forward. But now dancing on it is Gavin Rocky. Now they'll have a chance through the foot of Moss. Going to try to get it in play. And that's going to be a corner kick. So an early set piece chance here for the Bronx. We're just going to have to defend an early set piece here at the 37-30 mark. Be brought in by Carter Gale. Bronx set up on the far side of the 18. Now they'll start their runs across the middle to the back post there over the head of a Bronx, though, and heading towards the uh, far sideline. Bronx able to save it in, though, with Moss. And stay there. Dances past one Warrior defender. Para trying to recover. Scheibel now trying to deny the Bronx forward and do, but hoisted into the middle of the field, taken down by Balio there. Now the Warriors running with Tyshawn Swalstead. Sheds one player. Now will send it up the far sideline for Scheibel to chase after. Bronx defense is able to take it away, but Scheibel able to sweep it away from the defender. Now into the middle it goes. Warriors trying to deal with it and set it back up, but could not as Martinez was in the area as well. But it'll be a far sideline throw in for the Bronx. Good strength out there by Scheibel to keep the ball moving forward. The ball up ahead. Scheibel able to tap it forward. Now the Warriors going to take back over with Swalstead, trying to feed it inside, but Swalstead going to have to back off it now. Page, touchdown there, going to go to the outside for Weber. And then he's taz it tackled away, but going to be whistled for a foul there, Lucas Morris. So Swalstead going to have a free kick here from about, well, call it 31 yards out here from the near sideline. Warriors going to try to send it into the mixer with Swalstead. Does, challenges the keeper there, Gallagher, up to the test, though, right into his arms there, and a save for the Cody goalkeeper. Not too much danger, though, on it in the end. In a speculative shot from that far out as Parra is going to head this one forward out of the uh, goal kick for the Bronx. Now Weber almost had it. Good tackle in the end, but now Swalstead, a little 50-50 ball as that's going to be a warrior free kick. There is a collision between Peterson and Swalstead. Swalstead will take the free kick here. Sends it towards the back post now as Gallagher spills the shot there, but able to send it away, repelled it away there as Decker touches it to the inside. And the Warriors have it here in the uh, defensive midfield. Now to Martinez, back here for Para. Sends it up the field, looking for something for Weber to run on to. Colt Weber will chase this one down. Going to try to get past his man. He did momentarily, and now sliding for it is the Cody goalkeeper. Gallagher now takes his time here. Let's the Cody Bronx get forward. 34-30 left on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard here in the opening half. Still looking for our first goal as Teal gets a header to it. Now Page a chance to bring it under control, trying to lift it over the head of Rocky. Could not in the foul in the midfield here against it was either Pi. Page or Schneider there that was tagged for the foul. So a free kick, and the Bronx going to bring everybody forward. Only one defender back in the defensive half, and the Warriors able to repel it momentarily. And now the ball is loose in the midfield. Ball comes outside here for the Bronx. Touch the right wing for Moss to try to deal with. Para there doing the defending. Moss. Trying to turn to the inside as Para trying to take it away. Plays it off his man and out of play. Good defending by Para in the end. So 
So Caballero is going to send it away with the uh, right foot here. Just about uh, six and a half minutes into this one. Sends it ahead. Taken down by the Bronx. Trying to lift it ahead here. Cooper Cannon down on ahead. Leads it to the middle of the field. As Swalstead's going to take it away from his man. Nice job there. As the Warriors are trying to slide it to the outside here. Scheibel trying to chase it down and almost does against the Bronx defense. But Bronx able to send it across that far sideline. Now they're going to try to set it up for Scheibel to run after. Stays in play off of a Cody Bronx there as Scheibel just deflects it. But it's out of play across the end line. Goal kick coming for the Cody Bronx. Sorry about that. Didn't get back to our game feed there, so the picture a little bit better now for you, for those of you that are uh, tuned in. Bronx going to send it out of goal. Mark play by Teal in the end. He was being bared down on there by the uh, Cody attackers. He had Moss on his back shoulder. Ball comes in now here for Chrysler. Across the top of the 18, intercepted by Swalstead. Dances past one man and then has it swiped away there. And the Bronx try to take the shot. Great diving block there by uh, Schneider. And now the Bronx able to just get it back away and then have it taken away by Martinez and then into no man's land there for the Bronx to take back over. And Decker... Got to rush back here to try to defend that far sideline. Come into the middle for Rocky. Rocky had it taken away momentarily, and the referee has that one bounce off and probably going to be a bounced ball here as the uh, Warriors and Bronx will have to deal with a dropped ball. So the Warriors got a chance to get it forward and do. Schneider, ball bounced back there on a... Heavy touch, but Swalstead able to get it ahead for Fisher Martinez. Martinez tried to get it for Weber. Now the Bronx going to take back over on the sideline, and finally it is a whistle there as Martinez said that one went out of bounds, and it did. And here is Weber trying to take it back away from the Bronx, but it gets into the feet of Carter Gale, and then he's going to try for a long ball here as Moss gets underneath it. Now sends it to the middle. Caballero has to scoop it there. And Brian Caballero with a great save. First real chance for the Bronx. It was Gavin Rocky with a hot shot off the right foot, but right at Brian Caballero. High into the air from Caballero. Scheibel, great touchdown here as Schneider turns to the middle. Gets it off for Swalstead. And now sends it in the middle for Colt Weber. Tough first touch, but he's able to get past one man. Good defending in the end there by I believe that was Varian out there. So Warriors far sideline inbounds play as Martinez is going to come out. Chase Harris is going to come in for the Bronx. Wesley Scott into the game as he will replace Gavin Rocky, who had that first really good shot there. So across the middle here, Weber, chance to touch it down, able to get it back for Page, who spreads it outside for Swalstead. Shot here across the face of goal. Great diving save there by Gallagher. Great goalkeeping there. That was a tough one as the ball's headed down here by the Bronx. Now Swalstead going to chip it to the outside for uh for the Warriors, it was Scheibel who had the touch there and then bounced to the outside off the right foot of Owen Peterson. Peterson needs some help. Going to go to the outside. Going to be a Warriors throw in there as Scheibel leaves it off for Decker to come forward. So the Warrior Warriors have a number of players forward, three across the back line, but all inside the attacking midfield. Ball comes in for Schneider, a little header there. Ball's still loose. Weber had it for a moment, but the Bronx do just enough to sweep it away in the end. Sprinting out to the near sideline, Lucas Morris. Now Cooper Cannon had to go through his legs, but two Bronx come together, and now Moss up the near sideline. Going to try to drop this one off here, but Parra is able to track back and deal with that danger. Near sideline throw in, though, for the Bronx. End-to-end -end stuff here. Parra is able to intercept that uh, throw in with a header. 
And moving towards the middle of the field now are the Bronx. Intercepted there by Swalstead. Give for Page. Back for Swalstead. Running forward. Almost took it back on the 50-50 ball. Into the midfield it goes. Schneider. A little heavy challenge there. But the Warriors able to force it back. Scheibel now for Teal. And now a chance for Weber to chase something here as Weber had it deflected but came out of play. So good hustle by Weber but unable to keep that one in play. Sideline throw in now for the Bronx. Ball comes in quickly here along the near sideline, thrown into the middle, intercepted by Page. And now into the midfield for Swalstead. Swalstead dancing, going to send it outside for Scheibel to chase after. Couldn't quite get there. Taken down by Payne and chips it back here for the uh, Bronx to let it go. Child got a touch on it, but a little too heavy there and just escorted out of bounds by Varian. And Gallagher going to send it out of the goal here with the, looks like the left foot. And does, gets a lot into that one. Decker, though, judge the header, comes back. It's going to be Teal that has to send it forward again. Headers galore here between the two squads as Swalstead able to clear some space. Ball comes to the inside. Quick touch there for the Bronx. Now a real chance here. Ball comes to the inside as Cannon's able to send it away. Now Moss across the face of goal. And Caballero has to watch that one go across the far post. Good defending by Cannon in the end. It was kind of some last... Uh, Last second defending. Shavel is going to come to the bench now as Martinez comes in. Caballero, right foot to it, into the midfield. Little header down as Parra is going to able to get it out of there. Swalstead steps through. Now give for Page. Now Harris. Schneider to the outside. Weber back for Page. Trying to get it on a little through ball there, but... Intercepted by the Bronx and then underneath the foot of Gavin Rocky there. Or excuse me, that was actually Carter Gale. Or is going to head it forward, but intercepted the midfield by the Bronx. Swalstead tried to take it away, but the uh, Bronx on top of it. Now Swalstead is able to be worked back and take that one away. And going to go for Martinez to chase after up the uh, far sideline as they'll bounce to the outside with the Bronx. Good defending there, and it's going to be a foul. A little too much physicality from Martinez. So a free kick for the Bronx inside their defensive half. 25-34 left here in the first half. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard 0-0 remains. Ball four going to bounce a little bit awkwardly as Page trying to do the defending in the midfield. Harris turns. Bronx defenders, though, going to send it back ahead. Little soft touch to the inside. Bronx had it momentarily. Page going to take it away on the near side. Just defending it, then tries to get it back for Cannon. Cooper's got to run there and just deal with it and send it out of play. Ball comes in for Moss. Quick touch back now for Gale. High over the top. Caballero claims that one confidently there. It was an awkward one, but Caballero saw it the whole way. Now sends it out of the goal here for Harris to head down, and Page is able to run onto it. And Page going to try to win that 50-50 ball and able to win it back here. It's a kind of a battle for it in the midfield and finally does come ahead, and it'll be Decker to send it forward aggressively. Ball bounces awkwardly now here for the Bronx. Harris was there on the back shoulder, but good clearance by Cody. Swalstead going to defend here against Chrysler. Or excuse me, that was Scott there. Warriors have a sideline throw in there from the far side. Decker will take it on. Try to get it for Martinez and does. Then turns it to the inside for Swalstead. Swalstead up ahead for Page. Warriors trying to drive forward. Now going to give for Weber, but didn't get through as Morris had the intervention. Across the uh, near touch line as Cooper Cannon will have the uh, throw in now. And throw it into an area there for Harris to chase after. Could not. Now Cannon sends it forward again, but intercepted by the Bronx. Send it to the middle of the field. Warriors trying to get back on it here, but a chance for Cody to run forward. But Caballero going to be able to claim this one easily again. Make the uh, throw out there, and then Caballero sends it high into the partly cloudy skies here as Harris 
And the Bronx in a battle for it. Good uh, header there by the Bronx to bring it down. A little dance on the outside across the far sideline. Going to be a ball up the field but out of play. Changes. Scheibel back into the game. Weber comes to the sideline. Ball's going to be thrown in here by Decker. And Schneider turns momentarily. And now they're going to call a foul. As they say, Schneider illegally got past his man there. So just a uh, free kick coming here for the Cody Bronx. Right from midfield. Ball comes up ahead. Warriors, Swalstead, the first head to it. Now Schneider to the outside for Martinez. Trying to cross the field here. The Bronx just going to be able to bring this one under control, but probably let it go out of play, and they do. So throw in comes now for the Bronx. A little double team coming from the Warriors. Schneider couldn't quite bring that one down. Ball comes the outside for Gale. Now Moss. Para on his inside there as Cooper Cannon momentarily had it. And some dancing by Gale. Double team was coming. And then a foul going to go against Gale. So the referees want to get together here because there is kind of dueling fouls there. Not sure. I think the Warriors are going to end up getting the free kick, and they will. So Warriors get the free kick there after uh, Page gets chopped down. And Swalstead going to try to send some players forward. Got Scheibel here on the near side now. Martinez on the outside. Swalstead to the middle of the field here. Schneider is going to try to get the header. Bounces straight up in the air. Now bounces back for the Warriors. And Schneider going to easily get tagged for that foul. Sent the shoulder into his man there. So an easy whistle for the referee that time around. Bronx now a free kick of their own. Ball comes ahead. Page intercepts, bounces over the head of Martinez, but he's able to play it forward off of a Cody defender. Now the Warriors are going to try to run up this sideline, and nice job there by the Bronx defense just to intercept it. High throw in, taken down by Page, just sent it forward. Awkward touch there for the Bronx, trying to get out of trouble. Harris to the outside, and that time it's going to be knocked out by Varian, going to be a Warrior throw in. Actually, it's going to be Cody throw in. So after a discussion there, Bronx going to get the throw in. Ball comes ahead for Moss, lets it run through. Teal low on the ground, trying to find Schneider. Couldn't connect, though. Ball comes to the midfield here. Bronx, ooh, a heavy challenge there on Harris, and it wasn't intentional that time by uh, Aiden Gallagher. It was not intentional at all, just ended up catching the Warriors. Uh, Chase Harris, so Harris going to shake that one off, and Swalstead going to send a free kick towards the top of the 18 there. Ball headed away. Swalstead might be the first to it, and he is. Touches to the inside, trying to get past two Cody defenders. Couldn't. Ball to the outside for Gale. Now into the middle, and Decker should be able to deal with this one and does. Back into the midfield for the Bronx. And then Schneider right from behind picks the pocket of the Bronx, and Harris was trying to go for a give and go, but Schneider wasn't quite running at full speed just yet. Bronx going to drop it off into the... Defending line here. Warriors try to make it awkward as Decker rises for the header. And Schneider tried to bring that one down, but it was going to be a tough job as the Bronx have it across the far sideline trying to bring it under control. And Dune out of the middle, but Swalstead chance to take it away and does. And going to be a free kick here called. As Gunnar Mascaro going to come into the game for Chase Harris.
18-25 to go. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard opening half here of this 3A varsity soccer game. Warriors send it forward with Mascaro. Scheibel had it dropped to his feet, but it's taken away by the Bronx. And now Gale going to look ahead, try to take it past Cannon, trying to stick to his job. Nice defending there in the end. Gale has it back, though. Now hoisted into the middle. Caballero going to come and claim that one. Nice defending by Decker as well as Caballero was coming out to grab that one. Then to the middle here, Schneider lets that one bounce through. Mascaro comes and wins a header for the Warriors. Swalstead now for Scheibel. Couldn't get it through, though, as the Warriors tried to go for the through ball. And Swalstead comes ahead trying to do the defending. Gale will back heel to the middle of the field for Chrysler. And now the Bronx chance to run. Go to the outside here. Touch back to the inside. Shot here and wide of the far post. And the head referee going to call a corner kick here. The sideline referee had said goal kick, but apparently there was a deflection there seen by the uh, head referee. So it will be a corner kick with 17-10 to go here in the first half. Carter Gale out there to take it for the Bronx. Ball all the way across here as Para doing the defending, and the ball tipped away and a last touched by the Bronx. So Decker going to bring this one in. Tries to go for Martinez, who tries to flip this one on, and Martinez takes it back. Drop it off now for Swalstead. Swalstead a little bit of room to run into. Again, trying to go ahead for Scheibel. Scheibel going to have to try to take it back from the Bronx, just able to flick it out of bounds. So throw in coming here from Morris. Trying to find it for Gale. And plays it off as Scheibel and out of play. So the Bronx have it again with Morris. Throws it forward, trying to Get it there as Cannon sends it up ahead, but now a chance to cross the ball over, but nice job by Decker to get there to take it away, but the Bronx still going to keep it in the attacking half. Now a chance, Swalstead wins one ball here, but the Bronx able to get it back with a good hustle. Far sideline now, a little back heel not going to work out here as Decker sends it ahead looking for a run of Mascaro. Now Decker, an awkward touch there. Chance for the Bronx to try to build something up, but comes out to the outside. Scheibel able to intervene there, and then Swalstead dances to the inside, moves it to the outside, had it poked away, though. And the Bronx reset with Moss. Able to get it to the outside here for Gale. Chipped over the top, but there's Teal with the header. Swipe to the outside for Scheibel. Now Scheibel almost won it back here from Gale, but it's able to be chipped ahead. And the Warriors back on the defensive side of things as it's a throw in for Gale. Now ball thrown down onto the floor, and Gale has it on the turf, almost taken away by Page. Into the middle it comes for Chrysler. Ball bouncing around awkwardly here. Bronx trying to bring it down. Warriors trying to clear it off, and now a yellow card coming. Schneider's going to pick up a yellow card. Not sure exactly what the situation was, but the ref was quick to his pocket. So Schneider going to pick up a yellow card. Had one yesterday. So 14.23 to go. Dangerous area here for a free kick. They'll take the shot, but it's through the wickets for a field goal, but out of play over the crossbar. So Caballero going to have a goal kick here, so the danger gone that time as Schneider was booked with a yellow card. Caballero now to the middle of the field, going to try to get it for Weber. Nice touchdown, find it for Page. Now Scheibel has it taken off of his foot and running quickly are the Bronx, but unable, excuse me, with the camera work there, unable to track it down was Morris. Page touches it forward, but then right back for the Bronx and Carter Gale. 
Gale moves to the inside. Nice job by Teal to do the defending. And then Bronx fell to the deck there. And Scheibel just going to step inside. But the Bronx have it again. Heavy touch to the outside. Going to be a Warrior throw in. So Bronx are a bit on the front foot here as Scheibel tries to get a foot to that one. But Gale with another reset opportunity out of play for a throw in. Bronx trying to get it in for Moss. Did able to back heel it into play, but Scheibel tried to head it on, but that's a shot now. Wild one, swing of the leg there. So Warriors 12.45 to go in the first half. 0-0 zero, zero on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Temperature dropping a bit with the clouds rolling in and the breeze. Ball comes forward. Page trying to head it. Ball tapped into the middle of the field. That's going to be Swalstead to send it up for Fisher Martinez to chase after. Something for the Cody defense to do. A nice job there on the outside. The defending by the Bronx as they get it into the middle of the field. Chance at a counterattack here. Chrysler up ahead now. Tough touch here for the Bronx. Carter Thompson. Ball bouncing around. And Martinez is able to win it back for the Warriors. Ball comes into the middle here for Weber. Warriors have a chance to run. Ball outside for Scheibel. Into the middle it goes for Weber. A lot of traffic there. Still a chance. Scheibel is going to track down one Cody defender. And ball comes up ahead now. And the ball is going to bounce and roll all the way out of play here for Para. Give me a throw in here for Cooper Cannon. Ball's going to be thrown in, and I'm going to say Cannon had a foul throw there, said his foot came off the ground. And then should have been a foul throw on an unfinished throw there from Gale, but now it's into the middle for Morris. Touch the outside, great little touch of the inside of the foot, but another wild swing of it by Thompson that time. Doesn't challenge Caballero in the goal. Eleven minutes left here in the first half. Warriors trying to find some offense as Caballero sends it to the middle of the field. The man who took the shot there with a half header, and now Swalstead brings it down. Going to charge the outside, try to send it forward as the Cody goalkeeper is way out of the box here, and now it's an awkward one as Caballero is going to come out and claim it. Moss running through. As he'll drop it out, will Caballero for Decker. Trying to get a ball up ahead for Mascaro, but a good touch by the Bronx in the de in defense, but then turned over. Page has it outside for Scheibel. Scheibel into the middle for Mascaro. Now Swalstead goes to the outside. Nice touch back to the inside. And now a touch here for the Warriors trying to get it inside for Page on the run, but... Claimed by Gallagher again in the goal in the 18-yard box and then quickly gets it out. Bronx almost got that all the way touched down here. Moss battling against Swalstead. Had it half taken away. Then Swalstead ends up on the deck. Good strength from Moss as he'll look to go to the inside. Got past one man, but not the second. Nice clearance that time by Decker out for Gale. He'll work on Cannon, drop it to the inside. Now a little give and go here. Gale trying to get it into the middle of the field and chipped out here for Cannon to try to deal with. And Scheibel lets that one run through as Mascaro tried to step in front of the Cody defender. That was uh, Owen Peterson out there. And now Teal sends it back away again. Heavy touch off the chest here for the Bronx, and Swalstead's got it. Chance to run up the outside as tried to dance over that one and was taken away on a challenge on the outside by Val Payne, and then Payne drops it into the middle. Gavin Rocky, a wild speculative shot from about 35 yards out as that one looking for a highlight reel goal there, but... Well wide of the uh, far post of Caballero. Inside the final 10 minutes, 8.50 to go here in the first half in what is a 0-0 game. Warriors trying to gain a little possession as Page brings it down, trying to get it for Scheibel and good interception there by Morris. And now Gale lifts the head. Nice job by Cannon to deal with that potential through ball and a little frustrated with his uh, 
attempt there as trying to clear it, but it'll be Bronk ball on the near sideline. Morris going to throw the ball in now for Gallagher into the air by Scheibel. Now Gale with it, dances to the inside, finds his man there. A little turn from the Bronx, and nice job by Teal to stand in front of that challenge there by the Bronx. They were trying to break into the 18-yard box. Now a long throw in here, trying to find Gale, and chips it into the air as Para sends it away with the head. So another near sideline throw in here for the Bronx, taken away by Swalstead. Now going to give it for Scheibel. A little give and go up the middle here. Swalstead, heavy challenge there. That might be a card. No, probably not, as that's going to be the referee says that's probably the final one there, that one. And probably was a heavier challenge. Might have drawn out the card. I don't think it was necessary in that one. It just stopped the Warriors from driving ahead quickly. Clock's going to stop here at 7.20 to go as the uh, referee from the uh, side going to come out and talk to the head referee. Not sure if they're talking about the am – I'm not sure what the conversation is, obviously, and I think the head referee going to just can uh, confer there with the sideline referee. So Warriors will uh, send this one ahead. So Swalstead there to the far side, going to try to get the war, a warrior head to it. Bounces now. Martinez was underneath it. And then a little 50-50 chance here. Martinez trying to save it in but could not. And now quickly up the field, they try to go to the Bronx. As Weber was there trying to get it for Moss. Parra is going to have to deal with it. Gets it back ahead with the Bronx. Had a, a foot to it. And then Mascaro, nice strength there as they'll go out now for Scheibel. Well, heavy touch there from Caden Scheibel, but managed to track it back down and find it for Owen Page. Now Weber had it scoot underneath his foot as he'll try to track it back down. And good play there on the outside by the Bronx just to play it off of Weber for a throw in. 6.25 to go here in the first half, still looking for our first goal. Ball comes in, intercepted there from Martinez. Then an awkward shot, not sure if that was going to be a a cross of some kind or an actual shot there by Weber. I'm not sure, but ended up uh, spilling out across this near sideline for a Bronx throw. We'll see Corbin Butte try it, Drew Schneider back into the game. So Butte, first action of the day for the Warriors. This clock heads towards 5.55 to go. Throw in coming. Bronx have it momentarily. Ball stays in play. And then the next time, Butte unable to keep it in play there as the Bronx will have another throw in. Ball comes in now for the Bronx, tipped away by Butte. Moss going to try to get in front of this one. Cannon half clear there, and now the ball well ahead for Caballero to deal with and to scoop up. So out of the uh, box here from Caballero, high into the air to the right side as Page got a piece of that one with the head and the Bronx going to try to turn away from trouble Mascaro try to track it back down but the Bronx do a good job of clearing off the danger as Para rose for that one and then Decker gets the secondary header it's going to go out of play across the far sideline Bronx trying to flip the field here is Butte lets that one come down to his feet and chipped away by Gale. Now they're going to try to go up this far sideline, but it's going to be Parra to bring that one down and try to scoop it away from trouble. And the second chance also doesn't get it clear, but they're going to say, not sure if it's offsides or as a handball. So Swalstead up towards the middle looking for Mascaro. Good header there by the Bronx. And then Page able to Take it away. Butte had it momentarily. Good defending here by the uh, Bronx and then rolled out by Morris. So Cooper Cannon going to bring this one in. Going to try to give a chance for Corbin Butte to run after it. And does. Morris able to 
track back, though, and do some good defending, and then gets it up ahead for Gallagher, who throws it in the middle for Moss. Great ball there. Just two players back for the Bronx right now. Going to wait for some more reinforcements, and then nice defending there by Page. So he's going to try to find Swalstead. Bounces the outside momentarily. Now Butte, and that one rolls behind him and out of play. Caden Scheibel going to come back in, or no, actually going to be a Bronx substitution. Roan Thurmond into the game. So I'll throw it short now for Gallagher. And the Warriors almost take it back through Swalstead into the middle of the field. Colt Weber does have it. Swalstead steps it into the middle. Swalstead almost interchanges there with the uh, with the Warriors there. It was between Weber and Mascaro almost connected. Now the Warriors have a near sideline throw in inside the 18-yard box. Butte. Has it momentarily, but going to leave it off for Cooper Cannon to come and take the throw. As Cannon is going to try to throw this one in and does across the uh, box there. Dangerous one as the Bronx deal with it yet again. Chrysler able to clear that one off for the Cody Bronx. Cannon trying to get it for Weber. Header there. Bronx trying to get it clear. It's half clear now as Butte uses the strength to keep it here for Swalstead. And now Swalstead going to have to use the Jets up the outside cannon as well. Swalstead able to get it back here on the outside. A little 13 versus 13 battle. Good movement now here. Weber has it in the midfield. Going to work to the outside. Leave it off for Schneider. Now back for Page. Page trying to go to the outside for Butte, but it's intercepted here by the Bronx again, and then 50-50 ball lost out on there. Good hustle as that was a tough hit taken there by Thurmond, and I honestly think that that one was a uh, unfortunate shot to the you-know-where situation for Thurmond as he's going to be helped up off the field and just needs some help off again. That's a... Not fun situation there for Thurman as he's going to come to the sideline and hopefully he's going to be all right. Again, soccer ball, that's they are definitely uh, not a good situation to take a hard shot there across the midsection as Thurman's going to take his time over there. So also not sure if he just might also gotten the wind knocked out of him as well. So still top, stopped here at 2.01. So going to be a Warrior throw in here along the near sideline. Two minutes to go. Warriors throw it up here. Chance for Corbin Butte to race after it. And now Cody just going to get it to the outside. Good pass there. Going up the sideline. Hooks up in the middle with Gallagher. Now Moss and Gale. Moss way too much on that one. As it'll go out across the uh, far or the near sideline. Minute 42 to go. Is Butte going to try to take it back away? But it's right back for Moss. Trying to give here for Morris. And then the Warriors able to play it off of the Bronx and out of play. Just less than 90 seconds now here in this opening half of soccer on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard remains 0-0. All thrown up ahead, Butte, chance to try to use his pace and power to try to get past Morris, but could not, and then Cody sends it up ahead, and then Swalstead trying to bring it down there, tough touch, it gets it off for Page, to the outside looking for Schneider, who is able to step back on it momentarily, but then intercepted by the Bronx. Bronx trying to go forward, through a couple of Warriors, Paro was there to try to swing it away, but high into the air. As Moss has that one bounce awkwardly, try to get it to the outside. Half cleared by the Warriors as Schneider has a man come onto his back there as Schneider's still working with it. And the Warriors are going to get a far sideline throw in with 35 seconds to go as Decker will send one forward. Hard throw here. Gets it up ahead for Schneider. Towards the middle of the field, ball bounces past one Bronc defender. Now for Schneider, something for Mascaro to chase. And that one's loose, and it's still loose and collected right near the top of the 18 by Gallagher. Brave, brave goalkeeping there from the Bronc, from the Bronc keeper. 
This one goes high into the air with the final couple of seconds going to go by here, and we'll head to halftime 0-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. We'll head into our halftime show, extended break on the halftime show. Take a look at, uh, take a look back to the Lady Warrior game again. We won't have a conversation with head coach Jesus Davila today on the uh, halftime show because they had to go off-site for the JV girls game. So, unfortunately, cannot have a conversation with the Lady Warriors head coach after the Lady Warriors dropped it to nothing earlier today on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard at the half. Cody Bronx, zero. Whirlin' Warriors, zero. This is Warrior Soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Whirlin, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Whirlin High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. In its 24 years in Warland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Warland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. And welcome back here, field side at Cody High School. Halftime score, Whirlin' Warriors 0, Cody Bronx 0. Each team has had a, a couple of chances in this game, unable to convert any of them so far. Warriors have had, trying to use kind of the through ball situation. The Bronx have done the same. Bronx probably the most legitimate chances so far in this game, although the Warriors, uh, if they can get that Last touch, that final touch right, I think that's going to unlock that Brog defense. But right now, both teams competing well and uh, nothing, nothing, nil-nil on the uh, scoreboard here out on the Cody High School pitch. Warriors going to spend halftime here uh, talking things over. Uh, coaches in one side, players discussing things among themselves as well, just trying to kind of figure out what the uh, second half plan is here in half number two. The Warriors really came out against Sheridan yesterday with a great opening to the second half. They couldn't get the goal, and then again, mentioned just really one miscommunication between Caballero and Cannon was kind of the difference for that goal that ended up happening, but I'm not sure that either was really to blame for it. It was just kind of one of those situations where it was an awkward ball that – uh, happens in games and unfortunately led to that goal. So see what the Warriors have in the second half. I think they got to really do a lot better job of uh, dealing with the likes of Carter Gale and uh, Connor Moss, especially coming forward. Gavin Rocky was out there too, made some good runs, but I think those two are maybe the most dangerous between Gale and Moss. They've been in some dangerous areas throughout that first half. And then the Warriors still just looking for somebody somebody up ahead, somebody in the attacking forward position to kind of really put some legitimate downhill pressure on this Bronc defense, see if they can do that in half number two. Again, uh, the Lady Warriors early uh, challenged the 
Cody Phillies, and the Phillies came out on top two to nothing in that one. Lady War is still looking for their first goal and first win of the season. They dropped to 0 and 2 again early parts of the season. Right now, you're kind of just trying to learn some things. I still think, despite not getting a goal in the first two games, Lady Wars will have a lot of good to look at. Uh, coming out of this uh, first weekend of games, and same story for the Warriors. They're gonna still gonna still gotta have to try to break this deadlock at zero zero, and we'll see if they can find a way to do that here in half number two as they huddle up, talking with head coach Ron Overcast out there. Uh, again, this is the halftime show. This is Warrior Soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Do you want to remind you again, if you're a business or organization looking for an advertising opportunity, we're offering $50 in free advertising if you sign on through the end of the Warrior Soccer season. We'll offer you $50 off your advertising package. Again, uh, different levels. Again, you can do the Supporter Shield for a uh, discounted rate there if you just want your business mentioned. We appreciate those Supporter Shield members uh, this year. If you want something like uh, the commercials you see uh, here on McKamey Broadcasting, some of them provided by the businesses that were uh, professionally uh, professionally shot, so uh, keep that in mind. But also we do have the ability to create those commercials that hopefully drives uh, – drives in some business, and we're trying to keep that business in Worland, trying to keep it local. Uh, you'd be surprised about the things that some of these businesses have. Um, talk to some of those business owners. Again, let's just mention all the business owners uh, or the businesses now supporting this broadcast. It's Pinnacle Bank, McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, Hasco Industrial Supply, Admiral Beverage, King's Carpet One, Sally's Classic Pizza, Swing Trucking, McGarvin Moberly Construction, Diesel Pickup Specialist, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, Bryant Honey, Jay's Detail, Sage Creek Land and Cattle, and Stellar Roofing and Construction. So again, you have a lot of those businesses uh, that you know that want your support, need your support, and can provide you uh, services that can help you locally in Worland. It's always easy to think I can go up the road, I can drive to Riverton, drive here to Cody, or maybe go to Billings or Casper, but you know what, if we can keep those dollars local, uh, it's just proven that, again, if you spend a local dollar, 70%, 70% of it stays local, so keep that in mind. I was talking to one business owner, or yeah, one, one business owner earlier uh, this week, and one of them is Hasco Industrial Supply. Again, you read Hasco Industrial Supply, and you think industrial supply. It, it makes sense. That is definitely a big part of their business, but they also have a retail store that has so much there. They have clothing. They have shoes. Uh, they have jewelry there. They have belt buckles there. They have a lot of things in stock, so uh, just remember that for Hasco Industrial Supply. Just wanted to mention that because, again, the name can be deceiving, but there are a lot of places to shop locally uh, here in Worland. So we appreciate Hasco Industrial Supply and every business that uh, supports us here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network and supports these Warriors and Lady Warriors in their 2024 sports campaigns. We're in the middle of soccer season. That's going to do it for our halftime show. Halftime score on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Worland Warriors 0, Cody Brock 0. Who's got the winner? Um, we'll find out in the next 40 minutes. Second half action next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453.
And welcome back here to Cody High School. Bronx and Warriors heading to half number two. Put 40 minutes back up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. And we'll see if the second half can find us a winner. Both teams have had their chances, but nobody's bulged the net just yet so far. And we'll see if... One of these squads can break the deadlock. Warriors attacked the uh, north goal in the opening half. They'll attack the south goal now here in half number two. So Warriors out of the huddle here, getting onto the field. Bronx uh, late to break it here as the referees are getting ready. Just another check of the nets and getting into position. And so the Bronx now break and come onto the field. So Bronx going to have the kickoff here to open up this second half. And 40 minutes up on the board. So the referee raises the hand in the air, and we are ready for second half action. We're underway. Bronx with it, trying to move it up the right side, and a touch outside for Moss. Cooper Cannon got a piece of it. Now Moss picks it up, throws it forward for the Bronx to get on to. Gale had his foot to it, but in the end, the Warriors able to turn it away. But still got another far sideline throw in here for the Bronx. Looks like Moss is going to take it. Ball comes in short for Gale. Now tries to go to the middle of the field. Warriors got a toe poke to it momentarily. Now the Bronx going to back out of the attack here momentarily as... Warriors force them back a bit, and into the midfield they go. And again, the referee got involved there as he was just ended up uh, being in the way. It happens from time to time, so it's always a drop ball situation there with a little bit advantage to the uh, offense as they'll drop it there and down to the feet of Jarrett Chrysler. Ball comes to the outside now for Val Payne. Trying to cross the field now. It's kind of an awkward one as Schneider's able to win the header. But now on to it is Owen Peterson. Back up that sideline. Ball is loose, but Para came through. Got a piece of it and able to win it the first time. Second time, couldn't keep it in. Was that Gale out there? Or was that Lucas Morris, I think? Couldn't keep it in play across that far sideline. So Warrior throw in coming. And going to be thrown up looking for Schneider. Bounce through his legs as he's trying to hold his man back and does. So Morris held back by Schneider there. He had a good part of his jersey that time, did Schneider? This will be a free kick for the Bronx here from just inside of midfield. Bronx going to send it forward towards the top of the 18. Warriors win the header with Decker. The Bronx going to have the throw in, though. Val Payne going to take it. Going to take it quickly, and Decker tried to swing that one away, but it's going to be a set-piece chance for the Bronx here on a corner kick. Bronx has started the runners from the top of the 18, and it appears that will be the case again. As they do, Kick comes in from the outside. Caballero rises for a great save there. Brian Caballero using those leaping skills to snatch that one out of the air there and deal with the danger from the Bronx. Ball's going to bounce awkwardly here for the Bronx defenders, able to send it outside, and Martinez just can't quite get a foot to it. And the Bronx a chance to go in retaliation with the Warriors. Nice job by Schneider there to force the uh, – Touch off of the Bronx, and back in comes the ball for the Warriors. Now bouncing through to the outside, Schneider. Now going to get it down for Martinez. Tries to go the give and go here for Weber. Weber, good touchdown. The ball's still loose. Swalstead going to swing through it. Blocked away by the Bronx defense and just unable to save it in play there was Payne. So the Warriors going to have a near sideline throw in. Swalstead has it. 
Going to move towards the middle of the field, try to cross it up now for Martinez, taken away. Page to the outside looking for Schneider. Great pass there from Owen Page. Schneider cuts to the inside, trying to do so again, bouncing through players. Martinez onto it. He's taken down, and the referee says no. That one looked like it looked like Martinez was taken down there, but no whistle from the referee as he says no, not enough contact as Parra is going to be able to Deal with this half-dangerous moment as Schneider wins a header. Ball comes up ahead for the Bronx to midfield. Touch for Gale. Goes to the outside for Moss. Then tipped away by Parra and out of play. Ball thrown ahead now. Gale. Touch for Moss. Lifts it over the top. Was looking for the give and go with Gale, but could not come up with the uh, connection there. So Cooper Cannon going to throw this one in. As the Bronx step through and head it forward for Moss as he'll go downhill towards the top of the 18. Teal can't deal with it. Ball is loose, and Caballero going to take care of business there and send it quickly up the field, and the Bronx repel it. Ball coming forward momentarily as Schneider tries to bring in the hot shot from, uh, from Para there. It'll be a sideline throw in there for the Bronx. Man, would have to go back to that uh, challenge on Fisher Martinez. It really looked like it was close to potentially being a being a penalty for the Warriors. Now a quick cross here as Decker got caught in behind. Page, though, going to deal with this one as lifts it out. Chance for, for Scheibel to run underneath it and does, but good interception on the outside now by Nelson. Or actually, it's going to be Varian. Varian, Moss. Outside it goes now for Thompson. And back for Varian. Goes across the middle here. Warriors trying to deal with that one. Para just able to get a foot onto it, and Schneider going to get out there to send one across the ground. Intercepted again, though, by Gallagher as he'll send a high, hot shot there. That one, uh, again, a wandering effort from well outside the box there. Again, maybe knock in one out of 100 of those type of shots there. So the Warriors, if those are the shots the Bronx are going to take, they'll be all right with that. Caballero sends it out, trying to bounce it forward for Martinez. Now Swalstead through the middle, ball bouncing around awkwardly on the Bronx, but they're able to hook it out of trouble. And now the ball back in behind. Cooper Cannon gets a leg to it. Moss back for Cannon. Nice job by Cooper to clear that away. Hard header forward. Bronx have it. Into the midfield it goes towards Moss. Bounces down now for the Bronx again. Warriors repel it momentarily, and then nice header on by Page as he's able to get a touch there, but the Bronx take it back. It was almost a heavy challenge from Varian, but able to avoid any contact here. So the Bronx to the outside, going to try to cut it back inside. Par is on the deck. Bronx have a chance to bring it right to the top of the box there, and... Para, or excuse me, Caballero was pretty confident that one was going wide, but, man, was it a good shot from the top of the box. First legit chance of the second half there for the Bronx, but they can't score with 33.08 left in the contest. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard still reads zeros. Again, I'm not sure that anybody was as calm as Brian Caballero was there as the Warriors going to bring it down the midfield with Martinez. Get it back now for Page in the midfield. Spread it here for Weber. Weber a chance now to cut to the inside. Does on his man. Leaves him on his back shoulder there, and then a double team comes in. Bronx a chance at the counterattack. Into the hands of Moss, and quickly into the midfield it goes. Nice job by Parra to take that one away. Martinez a chance to run at it, but uh, not going to matter there. It's going to go out across the far sideline as Martinez just going to push forward just try to let Morris know that he's there. Throw in here for the Bronx. Comes in now. Ball up towards the far sideline now, trying to go back into the midfield as Teal's going to send this one high into the air there. Good defending as the Bronx bring it down, though. Moss going to get the first touch to it. Spreads it wide now for Gale. 
into the middle. There's Decker to uh, send it away. Swalstead had the first touch to it. Now Swalstead going to try to use the wheels, then able to chip it away. Scheibel couldn't latch on to it, though. Ball comes up ahead. Decker into the middle for Weber, and to the outside it goes. And Bronx didn't really need to touch that one. Swalstead, ooh, steps in good. Challenged by Varian. That one was a necessary step there because if Swalstead was going by, that one was going to be tough to deal with. Martinez working hard here to take it back from the Bronx. Morris trying to keep the pressure at nice touch ahead from Morris. Finds Gale to the outside. Now a touch in the midfield. A little exchange here. Warriors in a little trouble. Gale able to keep it in play. A nice job by Caballero to come through and claim that one. Again, confident goalkeeping from Caballero. Sends it high into the air now here for the Bronx to deal with. Good header down that time. Great touch by the Bronx. And in the midfield, it's taken away by Swalstead. And, man, ended up on the deck. Here's Scheibel trying to run after this one. And it's off of a Cody Bronx. Should be a Warrior throw, and it is. As that one came off of Chrysler. So Decker all the way forward now to throw this one in. Ball comes across the top of the 18. Bronx able to send that one away. And Teal... And others going to let that one roll out of play back in the defensive half. So the Warriors going to have to get a throw in here from Decker. Throws it in looking for Scheibel. That one bounced off the chest of a Bronk, but it goes for Swalstead. And then now just keeping it off of his man that time here for the Bronx. And now the Warriors got to get back defensively. And this one kind of loose into the midfield there, but it somehow found its way to Moss. And now it's loose again. Bronx unable to bring it under control, though, as the ball bounces awkwardly on Varian. Martinez was back there, but the Bronx have it again. Now to midfield. Man, almost on the deck there. Good uh, good balance in the end. Swalstead going to probably take this one back away, though, and he'll look to go to the outside, trying to use the pace. Left it off for Scheibel. Nice leave there. Caden Scheibel. Looks up ahead here as he couldn't quite get it for Schneider and headed back into the midfield by Cooper Cannon. Nice job to get a piece of that again. Now the Warriors a little bit of trouble here with Decker. Spreads it to the outside, but a chance now for Moss. And that one, again, a weak shot through the middle there. Moss couldn't get his foot onto it as Caballero has it. Send it to the outside now. Scheibel going to try to get his head onto that one, but could not. Swalstead tried to keep it in play, but swiped it out of play. Ball comes in now quickly for the Bronx. Ball comes in for the Warriors. I think they're going to call a foul throw there, and they do. So Scheibel comes off. Mascaro comes on. So here's Decker on the near sideline, going to try to throw it in, look for Mascaro to run over the top. Now the Bronx, that's going to end up conceding a corner kick for the Warriors there as that left uh, Bronx defender frustrated out there. I think that was uh, Varian out there. So Warriors going to send this quarter in with Swalstead. Right foot to it, comes into the screen, chance for... Gallagher there, and now Page spreads it out for Weber. Steps through, into the middle it goes. Ball's loose, back for Page. Find it for Mascaro, now for Swalstead. Steps inside his man, great defending there by the Bronx, and then Swalstead able to take it back. Steps inside the 18, top of the box for Schneider. It's blocked away again. Warriors reset chance possibly with Swalstead. Bounces now for Mascaro, and they're going to call and handball possibly. Are they going to call a foul on the Bronx? So a stop of the clock at 27.38, 0-0. Referee coming to the uh, near sideline. So it is a free kick for the Warriors. Ball coming in from the right side to the back post it goes. Schneider trying to get ahead to it. Warriors with Page bounces into the air. Now the Bronx a chance on the counterattack. 
Swalstead foot race against Moss here, and Swalstead almost gets all the way back, and he is able to get a piece of it. Nice job by the Warrior senior there. Swalstead, that's pure hustle out there by Swalstead as he's able to track down Moss. Now a bounce to the midfield. Bronx a chance with it. Spread it wide here for Thompson. Trying for a little give and go. To the outside, couldn't quite connect on that through ball pass to the outside. It's the Warriors' far side throw in. Change coming for the Bronx as Rocky is going to come into the game with the next substitution opportunity. Ball bouncing as Page and others come together there, and that'll be a foul on Owen Page. So a free kick in a fairly dangerous area for the Bronx still about 41 yards out from the goal, but it's straight away just can create some chaos here for the Warriors at the 26-30 mark here in the second half. In the 55th minute as that one's going to come in for Caballero as that was uh, Gavin Rocky trying to challenge the goalkeeper there, but in the end, no challenge in it. Ball's going to bounce awkwardly here on the Bronx defense. Ball bounced ahead. It's going to be Mascaro. Touch it in the middle here for Martinez. Then a sliding challenge there from the Bronx. Spread it wide here for Schneider. Back for Page. Up ahead it goes. Good sliding challenge. But now Schneider is going to step through. There's a challenge. Martinez comes across. He's upended. And the referee says no again. Wearing blue and gold. Comes to the middle of the field here for the Bronx. And a header away from Para. And a nice job by Weber to step through to take it away. And a stoppage on the field here is uh, True Schneider on the turf as he'll need a moment as the referee brings it to a stop. We're going to take commercial break here. 0-0 zero, zero with 25-37 left in this second half here between the Warriors and Bronx knotted up at zero on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Details, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. And we come back to live action there. Here as uh, Schneider got up after they can that shot and trying to find Martinez was Page. But the Bronx unable to save it in play, or are they? They did save it in play. Good job there by the Bronx. Good hustle as that one goes out across the far sideline. Changes coming in for the Bronx. As they'll bring in Gavin Rocky. Ball comes in for the Bronx. Short throw in there. Now the Warriors going to have to try to defend as... Nice job by Weber to step in front of that. Bronx had it at midfield. Now Schneider to the outside it goes. And Cooper Cannon trying to send Martinez on a run but couldn't get it to work inside of him. And now the Bronx have a throw in again, and they'll turn in the midfield. Wild swipe at it, and the Warriors now have to defend here in the midfield. Nice job by Weber. Good tackle there against Carter Gale. Good second half here, nice and competitive. The Bronx onto it with Gale. Now Moss turns, trying to turn to the inside. Page trying to hold him off. Then now a little guy to the inside here as the Warrior goalkeeper got to the ball as the referee is not going to call anything. Going to be a goal kick as it was Caballero and Moss coming together. And again... Cody fans could ask something there for sure as it was a 50-50 ball and looked like Caballero might have just got there first but definitely understand the uh, calls for a potential penalty. So two uh, potential penalty on either side here, neither called. So back to zero here as the Warriors send it ahead with Caballero. Para able to send it forward, found it to Schneider. Now back for Page, outside for Mascaro, tried to let that one slide into his foot as from behind an aggressive potential tackle there by Payne. Now a long throw in brought down here by the Bronx and Gavin Rocky, thrown into the middle of the field too strong there though as Cooper Cannon's able to recover. Get it now ahead for Martinez trying to spread the field for Schneider, does so there. Schneider as he is taken down by Payne. And they're going to call the foul on Schneider.
That's the uh, strangest call I've ever seen there as Payne just absolutely took Schneider out. I'm not sure how that could have been a foul in favor of the blue and gold there, but ball is headed away by the Warriors. Mascaro couldn't quite bring it down, but now sends it high into the air, into the defensive midfield, and now Weber brings it down. He's got a chance to run, going to send it out for Martinez to chase after, but too far outside and out of play across the far sideline. Strange decisions from the head referee in charge here, but uh, some strange decisions have gone against either side, so I guess at least it's consistent. Warriors trying to take it away in the midfield as Schneider dropped it back, trying to get it forward for the Warriors now as Cannon intercepted in the midfield. Into the attacking half go the Bronx, and now to the middle of the field, Moss was trying to connect a pass and drop it back for Decker. Quick touch here for Page. Lifts it up ahead looking for Swalstead. Header won by the Bronx. Warriors not attacking here as Gale tracks it down. And now a ball coming forward. I think Caballero is going to be able to deal with that one and does. Grabs it near the top of the 18-yard box. So Caballero sends it into the sky. 21-35 left in this one. Mascaro touch forward here. And now Swalstead tries to come through. He did beat his man to it, but... Uh, Ended up not mattering there as Varian was out in front of that. And now the, uh, they're going to say it actually came off of a Cody Bronx, a warrior throw in. Give it for Mascaro. Now Varian trying to get it back here. Mascaro into the middle of the field now, swiped away by the Cody Bronx, still loose. Martinez chips it back for Weber, stepping in. Couldn't get a shot off. Schneider tapped forward. Now the Bronx trying to get it clear. Para going to recycle it forward. High header into the air by the Bronx. Schneider sends it back forward. Ball bouncing and now finally brought down under control by Gale and the Bronx. As Page slides through to take that away from Gale, be a Bronx throw in. Now change coming back into the game is Carter Thompson. Wesley Scott going to come out. And the ball comes in here for the Bronx. Ball forward there. Para, nice job on the header to intervene. Now gets it for Weber. Weber for Swalstead, just bouncing outside for Mascaro. And a good step through now by the defender, Payne. And he'll run up the field trying to find it for his man, but rolls it out of play right around midfield. Ball back up ahead. Payne wins a header. Now it's popped over the head of Page, and Decker has to play it out. So near sideline throw in is coming. Nineteen forty-five to play in this one. Still zero zero on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Payne throws it in now for Rocky. Back outside, and Decker again swipes this one away out of play. So Payne with it here as a change came on as Carter Yale comes out momentarily. Clock running at 19.07 remaining here in the game as the Bronx try to get ahead on a long throw and do. Now a chance here for the Bronx, but slipping at the last second there was Gallagher there as he slid trying to plant his foot. So... Warriors, again, escape any kind of danger that time around as uh, didn't end up threatening the goal. Was kind of starting to develop into what looked like a le legitimate chance and a good shot as Caballero sends a line drive across the middle. Bronx trying to reset it. Cannon hooks a leg out to intercept that pass. Gavin Rocky, header one there by Page as he's got the size advantage. Now Teal going to lift it forward past the uh, Bronx, and now Swalstead, chance with it, and Swalstead going to beat his man on the pace here as Swalstead still has it, steps it inside, into the back of the net. Goal! Tyshawn Swalstead, 18-11 left in the game, and the Warriors have the opening goal there 
Ball turned away. Swalstead turned on the Jets and had the finish. 1-0. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Warriors 1. Uh, Bronx 0. A great goal there by Swalstead. Ball came ahead, landed Adams, spun away from the first defender, then fought off two Bronx inside the 18 and finished past Gallagher with the right foot. So the Warriors take the lead 1-0. Ball up ahead now for Rocky. Schneider on his back, shoulder. Bronx try to send it forward. Decker there to send it away. Mascaro tried to bring it down. Payne with it here on the near side. Sent up quickly. Teal brought that down. Now Schneider going to send it up for Mascaro to chase after. Bronx defender is back, though. Nice exchange with Payne on the sideline. As the Warriors going to have a little defending to do here. Good touch to the inside for Moss. Now he's got a man. Warriors going to try to defend up top. Rocky bouncing out to his right side, getting it there for the Bronx. A couple of quick touches. Chrysler with it now. Bronx looking for a quick answer. Now they'll pass it across the middle back for Rocky. Schneider right on his right on his shoulder, but gets it outside for Thompson. Back for Payne. Lifts his head, tries to put it into the middle for Moss. Good header away by Owen Page. Change coming in. Carter Gale back in, and he'll come in for Ro Roman Furland. So Furland off, Gale back on. Payne going to throw it in now for Rocky. Page right on his backside, and a good move here by Rocky. Steps past one defender, now past two, as the Bronx going to bring it towards the top of the 18. Back for Rocky. couple of passes inside the closet there, as they're going to try to turn it to the inside across the top of the 18. Ball's chipped out of there by Martinez. Chance now for the Warriors to step forward. It's Swalstead again. Now they'll run it outside. Payne going to keep it away from Mascaro. There. Like the idea for Swalstead exchanging with Mascara there, but in the end, ends up going out of play across this uh, near sideline. Payne going to throw it in now. Schneider right on the backside of a Bronk, and now lifted ahead by Decker, looking for Martinez on the far side. Able to get past one, drop it back off for the Warriors, and now Cannon's got a rush to the outside and able to Send it out of play across the far sideline there. Ball was just bouncing awkwardly with a lot of spin on it. Ball up ahead. Moss and Para now running after it. Moss with it. Para able to play it off him. No, able to get a throw in for his team is Moss. So the Bronx a throw in here. The far sideline of the 15-25 to go in this contest. Warriors on top. one nothing on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Bronx patient here, didn't try to force it, played it back, but now it's intercepted by Weber. Steps through one challenge, steps past another. Now he'll dribble to the middle of the field. Warriors a chance at the counterattack. Going to try to get it inside for Swalstead again, and he's brought down there, and that's going to be a free kick. About 20, 30 yards away from goal, and now a yellow card going to come in as Swalstead slipped between two defenders again. And he was in on goal, and so that's why the yellow card is there, and they're going to stop the clock momentarily with 14.53 to go. Actually, 14.45. I think they want the clock to stop is what the referee is saying. And does stop now at 14.44 to go. Wesley Scott comes back into the game for the Bronx. So Swalstead from deep out here. I don't know if he's going to try to challenge the goal or if he's going to try to slip it into a warrior. 31 yards out. This one's a long ways out. Swalstead strides forward. He'll hit it with pace, and that one way over the crossbar and out of play. Again, it's right in the center of the field. It's kind of hard to set up a set play, really, in that situation as Owen Peterson comes back into the game for Wesley Scott. Gal are going to send it out of the box here towards the near sideline. Scarrow ran a little too far, overran that ball as the Bronx have it in the midfield. Mascaro 
Trying to get up on that one there for Thompson, who's had a lot of the ball here in the second half. Spread it wide for Payne. Brings it in a nice soft touch there. Now outside for Payne again. He'll go up the sideline, step inside his man, go towards the middle of the field, and then that pass went wanting. As Swalst had another chance to run here as it comes to the outside again for Thompson. Thompson looking for Payne, but it's a little too hot for Payne to deal with there. And the Warriors have a near sideline throw in now from Decker. And now Mascaro going to run. Ball left into the middle of the field. Too heavy a touch there for the Bronx as Chrysler is trying to find Payne again. Caden Scheibel going to come onto the field for Gunnar Mascaro. And now Scheibel going to try to run forward, headed this one on. Bronx going to have to deal with this one, but I think they're just going to let it run out of play. Kind of a smart play there. Again, sorry about the camera catching the uh, window sills there. <laughs> Always trying to get down into that corner, and we can't. So apologies about that. Gallagher sends it out towards the middle of the field. Nice touchdown by Gavin Rocky, but then he left it behind, taken away by Schneider. Get it back for Para, trying to send it up the middle. Back for Rocky now. Schneider trying to do the defending, and Cooper Cannon has send it forward. Now a whistle coming in, and a yellow comes in for Rocky. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened there as Rocky comes to the sideline. might have been something he said. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but uh, at midfield, Rocky is... Assess the yellow card. So Warriors have a free kick right at midfield. Swalset will put the boot onto it. And Swalstead gets it here for Page, who brings it in on a touch, bounces the outside. Now give it for Scheibel, but Payne was able to step in front of that one and Payne a chance to run now across the near sideline. Shavel trying to make up the distance there. Again, those are those moments, again, for a younger player where you've got to come meet the ball. And that time the Warriors did not, so had it taken away, and the Bronx able to start up on a uh, counterattack. But now the Warriors able to scoop it up with – catch it on the bounce there was Caballero. They were trying to find Moss, but in the end it was not a real threat as we go under 12 minutes to play. Header forward by the Bronx. Good collection here in the midfield that time by – Gallagher as they'll move it to the outside for Gale. Back inside for Moss. Skips it along here for Thompson. Decker trying to stick to the job there. Swalstead tried to take it away, but ends up on the turf. Now back on his feet. Ball Thompson trying to switch the field here. And the ball hammered away there by Fisher Martinez. And Schneider lets that one bounce. And now it's going to come down here for Swalstead, but a heavy touch there, and Scheibel going to try to take it back away and does. Good defending there by Scheibel here along the near sideline, and it's chipped away by the Warriors, and it'll be a Bronk throw in, I believe. Change coming. Payne comes off the field. Check in here. Again, number not mentioned on the roster, so apologize about that. Good job by Tyshawn Swalstead to send that out of play again. Now Wesley Scott with a throw. No, it's going to be Bronx throwing it in, looking for Moss. And now Page couldn't, uh, couldn't control the header. And that's going to go out of play for a corner kick. So a near side corner kick. Dangerous set piece here for the Cody Bronx with just under 10 and a half minutes to play. Bronx going to start at the top of the 18 again. Now going to come out and take it. It's a little switch up here. So they'll reset the uh, reset the movement. Ball comes in. Ball's kicked across the uh, top of the 18 and then weakly into the uh, hands of Brian Caballero as he'll send it over the top now. Ball for Schneider to chase after. 
But a good job by the Bronx there to kick it to the outside. Couldn't find a man out there, but again, smart play with Schneider bearing down on the uh, Bronx defense. So the ball comes in now for Martinez. He wants to switch the field, but a little too much on that, I think, for Scheibel to try to chase down. It is down into the corner. So a goal kick coming there. I like the idea for Martinez trying to switch the field, but a little too much on that one. Gallagher in goal, going to send it forward. Trying to find a man in the midfield. Weber had brought it down on a touch, but then it's taken away by the Bronx. Carter Gale in the middle of the field. Going to look for an option. Has a man running to the outside, but left it behind him. Now Gale going to take back over, going to take on Cannon to that far side and trying to wrap his foot around it to get it into the danger area. Could not and goes out of play harmlessly here as Caballero will have another goal kick. So Caballero set to send it away here as we're at the 8.30 mark of this contest. Ball comes in the middle of the field. Weber a touch to the middle there. It was a soft touch, too, but nobody home but Cody Bronx. And Moss has it now. Find it for Gale. Into the middle of the field, headed away by Decker, at least half away. Now Page a little farther forward, and Weber going to send it up for Schneider. Now a chance for Martinez to chase after it. And Martinez had it bounce off of him and out of place. So it'll be a Brock throw in. Good defending back there by Morris. Ball down for Gale. I think that's going to go out of play, and it does. So, ball goes out of play. Going to be a throw in for the Warriors along that far sideline. As we tick now inside of eight minutes, ball thrown up ahead, looking for Martinez. Martinez steps through, tries to take it away from his man, leans to the inside, still has control of it, leaves it up top for Swalstead, bouncing to the outside, looking to make a move. Had a chance to drop it off, dribbles between two defenders, throws it into the middle there. Good defense by the Bronx in the end. As it comes to the outside, chance for the Bronx to keep it in play, and they do. But then Shavo got a piece of it, but the Bronx still a chance to go forward. Page now has it, going to go for a 50-50 chance. Ball's still bouncing around, and it's going to be a foul on the Bronx. So Swalstead going to take the free kick again. Wallstead, ball coming in from the left side of your screen. Ball comes in now looking for a man on the top of the 18. Ball bounced forward. Bronx momentarily had it. Nice job by Weber to reset the opportunity. Now Page going to head it forward. It's going to head all the way down. Probably going to be a goal kick there, and it will be as it goes out of bounds across the end line. Six and a half to go in this one. Warriors leading it 1-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Changes coming for the Bronx and the Warriors. Mascaro into the game. Also, Gavin Rocky back in along with Val Payne. Again, Rocky got tagged with that uh, yellow card. Had to come to the sideline. Fisher Martinez comes off. So Gallagher with the uh, left foot sends it out of the uh, goal area. Mascaro had a touch. Now Weber's going to take it away in the midfield. He'll look to the outside, finds it for Swalstead. Swalstead going to start forward. Tyshawn with it, dribbling, going to throw it up ahead for Schneider to run after. A nice job by, again, apologies about the camera. It's like I keep thinking that angle is there. But it was a good job by Gallagher to come out of his, uh, out of his net there and to uh, send that away across the uh, near sideline. So a throw in now for Decker. Comes in, header away by the Bronx. Touchdown by Swalstead and quickly out of play. By the Bronx, it'll be a throw in again for the Warriors along the far sideline. So Decker going to go for the throw in. Throws it a hot one across the middle. Schneider tried to bring it down, but would have been a tough job. And then the Bronx take it away, bring it into the middle for Moss, but it's intercepted by Teal, who lifts it back in. And now Schneider onto the ball, left it for Mascaro, but a little short on the pass. And then Teal again in the middle, or that was Parr actually that sent that one forward. Now Swalstead with it, keeps it forward, takes on another shot. Good job by Gallagher, nice save there 
As that was a great shot by Swalstead, even better goalkeeping that time around as Decker won that header, but it's going to bounce awkwardly. Para has it. Now Page just flicks it on. The Bronx have a chance to attack here, and Para is going to pick up a foul here on Rocky. So Rocky and the Bronx are going to have a free kick in the middle of the field be taken by Chrysler. 418 left here on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Warriors leading through a Tyshawn Swalstead goal. The ball is going to be sent in by Peterson over the top. Dangerous area. Caballero came out, still has it near the top of the 18. Nice job there by Caballero as he's on top of it. Scoops it up there. Moss was in the area. Came out to grab it, couldn't catch it. Ended up spilling loose, but then Caballero seals onto it and sends one high into the uh, defensive half of the Bronx, attacking half for the Warriors. Swalstead with it. Going to try to get it for Scheibel, but couldn't get it past Payne. Now Payne taken away by Page. Get it outside Mascaro, but it's intercepted there by the Bronx running up the field. Now goes Cody up that far sideline, and Para is able to win it out there, and that's going to be a flag on the Cody Bronx. It'll be a free kick for the Warriors. Good job by Para just to win that one. It was a great sprint forward on that far side. I think that – not sure if that was uh, Varian or who it was out there. It was a great run. Might have been Morris even, actually who made that long run from his uh, right back position, but then ended up shouldering it up against Para. And good job by Roman Para to win that free kick. Now the ball over the top. Chance for Mascaro to chase it here. Again, it's just going to go out across the uh, sideline here. Ball thrown up now for Morris. It's going to be Weber, a little push in the back there. Weber able to save it now. And Page for Decker. Had a man on now, Swalstead here on the near side as he kept it in play. Now Swalstead dancing with the with the ball through the leg there, nutmegged his man that time around, but then taken back by the, uh, by the Bronx. And Swalstead brings it under control through the legs again that time, but it's taken back by Moss in the Bronx. So some fancy moves, but uh, didn't win the possession for the Warriors. Nice job by Page. And send it for Mascaro to run after again. And nice job by Morris to just softly keep that one in play. And he'll rise forward trying to set the attack for the Bronx. But now it's going to be Caballero just to bring that one in to his hands safely. Minute 50 to go now. Warriors on the cusp of an opening victory their 24 season, but still got a little bit of defending to do. Weber in the midfield now. Just going to try to chip it up ahead for Mascaro. Got it to him. Then Gunner leaves it behind. Inside for Schneider. Schneider to the outside looking for Mascaro. He's going to have to run after this one and couldn't quite keep that in play. So the Bronx have a throw in here. Is head under 90 seconds to go. Minute 20 left in this one. Bronx back for Morris. Sends it forward but out of play. So Morris was trying to go for the long ball but couldn't wrap his foot around it there. So the Warriors now another chance to chew up a few seconds off the clock as they'll throw it in quickly from Cannon. Couldn't get it into the attacking part of the field now. And Caviero going to come out and boot this one away. So a chance for Gale to get under control but could not. We're inside the final minute. 45 seconds left to go now in this one. Warriors on top, one to nothing through a Tyshawn Swalstead goal here in the second half. Cannon throws it in, looking for for Weber. Warriors kept it in with Mascaro. No, they didn't. It's going to be a throw-in coming here for the Bronx. So a little bit more defending to go here with a half minute to go for the uh, Bronx to try to find a equalizing goal. Warriors just trying to do the defending, and Mascaro going to commit a foul there and a Yellow card's going to be coming in for Mascaro as they stopped the clock with 18 seconds to go, and I think that's fair. So Mascaro going to have to come off the field here for uh, Fisher Martinez to come on. So the Bronx will send everybody forward. There is every player forward for the Bronx. Put the camera near the attacking area. Free kick going to come in from the right side of your screen. And now the clock's going to start running. 
15 seconds to go towards the middle of the field, repelled there by Weber. Chance at the reset here for the Bronx. And they hoist it forward. Warriors win the header again with Page. Bouncing around three seconds to go. Two and one. And the Warriors are victorious at Cody as the number one Warriors take down the number two Bronx in a highly competitive match here at Cody High School. A tip of cap to the both of the teams as the Warriors claim their first victory of the season and perhaps the first victory of a long streak. No, we won't talk about that. Warriors fell in the opening game, avenged their loss of the win here on the road at the Cody Bronx well-contested game. one nothing. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. We'll be back with the post-game show next as we wrap it up from Cody High School. We'll await the arrival of head coach Ron Overcast after a bit to have a quick conversation here on the post-game show and then we'll sign it off from Cody High School as the Warriors are victorious. one nothing. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard this is warrior soccer on the mckamey broadcasting network call 307-431-1468 or email mckamey broadcasting at gmail.com hasco industrial supply is known for their industrial hoses steel products and trailers but they'll surprise you with products for every customer check out lazy one clothing matching pajamas and more Kill Tech jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with trail press blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Whirlin, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Whirlin High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Welcome back field side. As you can see, the Warriors huddled up with head coach Ron Overcast after a disappointing loss to open up the season. They are resilient on a quick turnaround at Cody High School. Take out the Bronx one to nothing on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as it's a Tyshawn Swalstead goal that is the difference. It was a almost a Herculean effort by Swalstead as he drove ahead, split two defenders then held him off again and he got inside the box and beat Gallagher to the left side and into the corner pocket for the for the goal as again this is the post game show we'll wait for head coach Ron Overcast you can see him uh, coming over this way it'll take him a minute to get up for a conversation here on the uh, post game show we'll remind you again if you're uh, again if you're a business or, or a uh, organization that is is interested in uh, sponsoring a portion of Warrior Soccer. We're looking for a halftime sponsor. We're looking for a uh, post game sponsor as well. Again, you can also if it's if this year is what you're not not thinking maybe this year, but you're looking ahead to the 2024 2025 seasons for Warriors and Lady Warriors. Make sure you reach out to me at McKamey Broadcasting at gmail.com or give me a call or text at 307 431 1468. Final score on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard one nothing in favor of your Worland Warriors post game show. Wraps up next with a conversation with head coach Ron Overcast here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. 
In its 24 years in Warland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Warland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. smaller a mini shack baller i wouldn't have to yell when i talk to a toddler i wish i had more leg room on a plane or a train life is tough when you're taller yeah i shop it big and tall but when it comes to my pepsi i like to keep it nice and small a soft drink for your pocket so light and refreshing one sip don't knock it so the next time you have to check out line grab some pepsi minis but get your own because these are all mine 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 Welcome back well, inside you. the post game show. Jordan McCamey now joined by Whirlin Warrior head soccer coach Ron Overcast. Coach, full on effort out there from the Warriors. Had the chances, finally took uh, took the chance with Tyshawn Swalstead. Kind of a Herculean effort between two defenders. How are you feeling now after the victory out on the road against the number two Bronx? We ain't dead yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was. That was a gritty win. I mean, the guys, you know, if you saw the game yesterday, we, we looked a lot sharper. We had a lot more energy. Um, and I was worried that we would come out flat, and we did. And, you know, th th those guys, they just willed their way to a win. That's what they did. Um, you know, everybody was just a little bit off. Our passes were a little bit off. And, and um, you know, I just told them I'm proud of them because – there's there's always times in the season, and especially a state, you got to be able to win these type of games. And and um, you know I've I've been real hard on them this past week, but that's where I'm trying to get them is so we can win these games when we're not 100%. And um, you know we but we just got we can fight through it. We got the mental toughness to do it, and so. I mean that was that was a big step forward. We have a lot of things technically to to fix out on the soccer field, but um, I mean I think our defense is looking good. Um, probably start spending a little bit more time on our attack, and <laughs> I will I will get around to that. <laughs> hey, if they don't score, you don't gotta you don't gotta yeah, put many no. past the goalkeeper. But right? I know I was I was joking with I, with Owen Page. It's like you you remember you know I always tell you guys if they can't score they they can't win and. I said, well, unfortunately, the vice, vice versa is also <laughs> true. So, <laughs> and that happened to us yesterday. So, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm pretty proud of them. They, they, they've had a really good weekend. And, Coach, uh, just talking about when we looked at the Sheridan game, there was that miscommunication in the back between uh, Cooper and, and Brian. Today, though, I'd say one of the keys coming out, it was some courageous goalkeeping from oh, Brian yeah. Caballero. I mean, Cabby is <laughs> – Fearless. He is one of the <laughs> he is one of the best keepers in the state. He really is. I mean, he I, how well he catches the ball and and um, you know I mean we're we're fortunate to have him and I, he 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 was a stud yesterday and he was again today and I mean I can't be more proud of him. And and coach, just looking at this victory, it felt like the goal itself might be the identity of this team, just willing to outwork your opponent. Because Tyshawn Swall said could have given up on that. He could have gone down. He could have tried to get a foul, but instead fights past one defender, then splits the final two and finishes. Classy yeah, finish. And it was a nice finish. I mean, classy he, finish. That, that was excellent. And, and um, you know, last year at State, um, Tyshawn had his breakout moments. I mean, he was he was awesome at state last year, and it's so fun to just see him. Now he's just building off what he what what you know what he learned at state last year, and I mean, I think 
watching these two games, you can kind of see who our on-field leader is going to be. And, and you know, we, I've talked to him a lot about, you know, in, in the past, you know, I mean, we had a court, court or we had a Cole and um, that would step up and make that play. And, and I've been challenging them all week. Who's that going to be? And, and, you know, I mean, and Tyshawn did that today. He stepped up and he made the play for us to get the win. And, and I did tell him in the huddle, now we need – a second guy, a third guy, and a fourth guy that starts doing that, and then we're going to get pretty tough. Jordan McCamey here with Portland Warrior head coach Ron Overcast after a one nothing victory at Cody High School against the Bronx. Coach, any final thoughts here as we wrap up the opening weekend with plenty of weekends to come? It was it was a really good weekend, and and you know we're going to go back to work on Monday and and try to improve. And then we got our favorite team coming up at 1 p.m. on Friday. So, you know, I just I told him if you lose that game, you just, yeah. just go walk the other way. <laughs> but, no, no that's, that's just a, that's joking. I'm yeah. Not. <laughs> no. Uh, but, um, no, we're going to get ready for Powell. And, uh, you know, it's been – one thing I'd like to say is to the winter coaches, they have done – they did an outstanding job with their conditioning this year because my guys are in shape. I mean, this is – usually we don't even try to play two full-sided games in, on this weekend because we're not in – you know, you're just not in soccer shape. And and um, our, our conditioning needs to improve to, you know, get into soccer shape. But the winter coaches, you know, Coach Garcia and Coach Abel, they did a really good job of getting their guys in shape because that, it takes a lot to come out here and run a – on a 120 yard field that's 75 yards wide and go full speed all the time. So makes me tired. I do watching a, it. And I do appreciate that. You know, that's, it's kind of helped to make our job a little bit easier. Well, coach, we appreciate you taking the time. And like I said, we'll look forward to pal and plenty of warrior soccer to come. Thanks for stopping right. by. Thank you. And coach Ron overcast there 30 second break. And we wrap it up on the other side here on the McKamey broadcasting network. Over Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. And welcome back to Cody High School. We wrap it up here from the home of the Bronx and the Phillies. Warriors victorious 1-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Lady Warriors fall 2-0 to the Phillies. First weekend in the books. Warriors 1-1. Lady Warriors 0-2. But right back to work and more soccer next week. As again, keep your eye on the McKamey Broadcasting Facebook page for all those links and all the information and everything. Worland Warriors soccer. Until next time, and there will be a next time. Go. Berlin Warriors.